All right. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another lovely lunar live stream. And we're going to be continuing. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll switch it over right now, but I got to log in uh, on PC again. Um, uh, doing another. Uh, continuing the Renaissance du Fantastique. Um, uh, playthrough, which is really just going through the story. Um, <coughs> reading through it, I do have uh, some tea that I made, lemon, ginger, cinnamon, with um, a big dollop of honey. So hopefully that helps my throat not get so dry and make me cough so much throughout the today. Uh, we shall see. Depending on how it feels will also depend on how long I go because I don't want to push it and you know mess up my throat or anything so let's, uh, let's get to it. I have completely corrupted this place while you were away. Ooh, tomorrow I get the new Vera. Just joking. Skin. Nice. Remember to do your daily logins. What the? Oh, yeah. Okay, Church of Machina. In return for your companionship over the past year, I shall accompany you through the new year. Reasonable exchange, indeed. Thank you, Heikma. Congratulations on getting my anniversary message, Commandant. Collect six more and you'll be able to summon none. <laughs> God damn it. Ah, uh, Nanami. Yeah, sure, why not? Yep. Oh. Blue weapon, yep, then my auto carry it. I'm not gonna lie, this idea of like a spear lance thing but it's dual bladed like that is kind of interesting i feel like that would make granted the way it's set up there wouldn't make it as strong because it's just connected on the little bits right there but i feel like you know the idea of having two blades like that would possibly make it more deadly in the grand scheme of things uh but anyway okay let's see up, back, 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 yep, back. Um, got a shop, buy that, yep. Okay, we go back. We enter the dorm. I need to, I've been slacking on this. I need to log in every like couple hours so I can do these commissions. So I can go through them faster, you know. <coughs> okay, roughly five hours, okay. Uh, file cabinet, archaeology, yeah. Script, yeah. Other ground areas, oh cool, yeah. Yeah, for the upgrade, I need. <sighs> I need eight more commissions done in the nine tickets. So then get more uh, dispatch job. But I have enough for more Inver shards to Kaleido. Which means, actually, now that I think about it, what? now that I think about it, how many more do I need, actually? I'm at 13 out of 50. I'm not that far off, actually, now that I think about it. 
Ah, yes. I love that Kaleido. It's great. And the only current coating that she has is this one, Morning Star. But she does get an uh, SFX coating um later on that's actually really cool right now that's all she has <coughs> only to be beat up by her normal uh design which i have at triple s and honestly probably close to look at that i'm a few off from phase five simply because triple s plus simply because she keeps appearing in gotcha rolls so oh the that's right it had a, a a voting thing to see what we would name this bianca skin i guess Solitary Dream one. <coughs> okay. Sorry for the... I apologize for the coughing. Fortunately, it's something that I'll most likely have to be dealing with for uh, a good while. But, continue. An experiment on a bird in the air pump. Drawings reflect the part of us that we don't want to see. As if standing in front of infinite blacklit mirrors, or backlit mirrors, each mirror reflects a helpless and confused self. One knows that nothing can be grasped, but one still tries in vain. Like a moth chasing after a flame, never reaching the destination it intends to. The World Government United Army, the 3rd Artillery Regiment, the Construct Company, including Captain LeBron, a total of 127 fearless warriors. Your sacrifice will be remembered, and we will carry on the road you paved for us until the day we claim back our homeland. May you rest in peace, humanity's children. Deafening salutes and gunshots fill the air. The string in her chest tightens with each gunshot. She got first again. Is she someone like Langston and Spaniard? <laughs> Those two are both geniuses. Heroes who command elite squads in battle. How can a nerd who only knows about exams be compared to them? You know why she's the chief? Because she's from the LeBron family. That famous military family from the Golden Age. The higher-ups want her in the HQ, that's why. Really? And the FOS allows this? But I heard she's not going to work in the HQ, but as a commandant. That's what my friend said. His dad works in intelligence, so I bet it's true. But even as a commandant, do you seriously think she's going to fight on the front line? The string tightens. The result, the Academy thinks working in the general staff directly under HQ is your best choice. Also, even though it's unconventional, the control court and the higher-ups of judicial court have expressed an interest in you. But you seem determined to go through with your decision. If you insist, then the Academy will respect your decision. Titans. Lastly, the FOS Military College grants Sika LeBron the title of Chief. Young people, we hope that you will carry on the will of our heroes and become the cornerstones of our future. Titans. The front line has collapsed. Abandon the scouts and vanguard. Tighten the battle line. 
We can only prevail if we strengthen our defenses against this wave of attack. Those people are as good as dead. Are you telling more people to go die? What's the point in remembering all those battle tactics? You really think the battlefield is just like your textbooks say? Titans. So you're the new chief. I'll just call you Miss Top Student to not confuse you with others. Objectively speaking, it is not entirely your fault that the casualty numbers were higher than expected. Our first priority is to protect this land, and since they were more corrupted than expected, it makes sense to send some unlucky souls to fill the gaps. But what was it with that pathetic attitude of yours? Was it necessary to look that miserable just because a few more constructs died? I couldn't even... You can't even get your priorities straight. I don't understand how HQ thinks you're fit to be a commandant in the first place. I don't need someone who can't command their subordinates properly on the front lines. Summarize today's battle report, and then take your pathetic little squad to the benches. Go be friends with the medics or something, I don't care. Always tightening. And then... I thought off OS... Chiefs were outstanding, but it looks like they were exceptions. The general staff is disbanding the squad. It's the end of the line. The tightened string snaps. Only wandering on this endless path. Only revolving around an unknown light. Since when? Mechanically and numbly marching forward, considering it as her responsibility. When she finally comes to her senses, we can hardly even remember the reason that led to her confusion in the first place. I think having a dream is a wonderful thing. No matter how hard to achieve or how childish the dream is, no matter the inevitable failures one will face on this path and the non-existent results that await one, even then, I think these idiots who work hard towards these unrealistic goals, shine the brightest of all. Dika. Dika. So half asleep, are you? I think someone can sleep through all this noise when we're entering the atmosphere. Fragments of conversations enter the ears of the slumbering soul, simulating her consciousness. Right after, the ship shakes roughly together with a huge centrifugal force, waking her up immediately. What? Oh, you're awake, Zika. Huh? What? Wait, I fell asleep? When? Have we already reached our destination? Embarrassed by her little slip-up so early in the mission, Zika frantically looks around. If it weren't for, her, for the seatbelt restraining her to her seat, she would have fallen right off. Relax, there's still one hour till landing. We just encountered some cumulus clouds, so we had to climb up a bit. We still haven't gotten to the troposphere yet. Did you pull an all-nighter last night? Take this chance to cap up, catch up on some sleep. No, I did it to organize the mission information. If I rest now, then it will be pointless. And I know it's a bit late, but let's go over the mission details. Ika shakes her head to keep herself awake. She unbuckles her seatbelt and makes her way towards the tactical terminal, pulling up all sorts of information she has gathered in the past few days. Unknown City 001. It was named Constellia in the Golden Age, based on the word constellation. The chief designer was Michel Vasari. He was an important member of the WGAA back in the Golden Age and also a renowned architect. Constellia's construction was ceased due to the outbreak of the Punishing Virus, and Michele himself had passed away due to illness a year before the outbreak. Constellia has now been rediscovered by Babylonia, and it is estimated that 20% of the original design has been constructed. Even then, it's quite a sight. <coughs> if our speculation is correct, and that the city is being maintained by an abnormal mechanoid, then we'll have to be prepared for a fight. Although it's not the corrupted, we cannot underestimate the threat level of this mission. Ah. <coughs> ah. 
then I can put this to good use. Isla nods with some thought and then proceeds to pull out a storage box from a hidden space under the tactical terminal. After entering the password, the box opens with a click as sublimated dry ice dissipates. That's... High frequency electric knives against the corrupted, wide area electromagnetic stun grenade, tactical pistol for commandants, multi-purpose grenade launcher with special ammo, and all kinds of tactical equipment. Where did you get your hands on those? Aren't these the latest trial weapons from the Science Council? I didn't think our squad's weapon quota could get us these. Hey, hey, let's just say I know someone in the WGAA who links... Who has links to the weapons development department. The people at the Science Council said that as long as we're willing to pay a slight trial fee, then they'll lend us these. After all, they do want data on these weapons in actual combat. The power of money. But why go through all the trouble? Well, this is our first mission as a team, so of course we should be more prepared. And I know you care about this mission very much, Sika. How can I not do my part as captain when our commandant is working so hard? There are a lot of weapons for commandants here. Take your pick, Sika. Isla gestures towards the weapons. Just like the witch who led Hansel and Gretel into the candy house, telling them the candy was all theirs to eat. No, um... Having lots of weapons doesn't mean it's better. We also have to consider the portability. Sika quickly shakes her hands, but her gaze is captured by something else in the box. Oh. I can hear you gulping from here. <clears throat> the new CI charge pistol. The seventh generation as well. We were still using the sixth generation back at the FOS. Oh, -ho. there are more add-ons to choose from now. Ah, and the safety's been moved here. Trojan helplessly glances at Sika, whose attention is completely occupied by the new weapons in front of her. Trojan then shoots a suspicious gaze over at Isla, who had just casually pulled out all of these weapons. I thought the WGAA consisted of peace-loving, harmless artists, and from how your frame is constructed, it seems that someone there is very familiar with construct technology. Hehe, <laughs> people join the WGAA because they like art, but apart from that, Everyone has their own story. The WGAA would also welcome you two if you ever discover your passion for art. Trojan chuckles at Isla's invitation and starts to pick out a suitable weapon from the present box. This frame's exclusive weapon should be made by Vesalius. I can't imagine her just sharing her designs. Looks like even Kurono's R&D chief succumbed to our captain's charming personality. And this... This is a specialized arrowhead for compound mechanical bows. This is prepared for our fourth member, whom we have yet to meet. Oh, you mean Lena? Squads in the task force usually consist of four members, and Iris Warbler is no exception. Other than Isla and Trojan, Lena is the last temporary member of the team. I remember Chairman Allen mentioning that she used to be a caribou. She used to be in caribou. Yes, that was about a year ago. Due to Caribou's unique status, their member details are highly confidential, so this is all we know. After withdrawing from Caribou, she's been carrying out missions alone on the surface, rarely returning to Babylonia. And because HQ never updated her personal profile, you and I don't know what she looks like. As she's already on the surface due to other reasons, she has requested to meet us at the destination of this mission, Constelia, instead. Former Caribou member. HQ really wasn't kidding around when forming this squad. Don't think I don't know your credentials don't pale in comparison to theirs. Trojan, you've been serving Babylonia since the Acadia evacuation if I recall correctly. If we're only talking about service time, then it's similar to the current captain of the purifying force. She was still fighting on the front lines not too long ago. She's way stronger than me. Due to the sequela of mind damage from previous missions... I'm no longer suitable to fight on the front lines. What kind of mission can lead to such serious injuries? Your resume also didn't state which squad you served. I don't know. I can't even remember that. As for squads, just as caribou. If you can't find anything, then it's best you don't know. Hmm. 
It's like how there's always one or two members with a mysterious past on teams who save everyone at crucial moments with mysterious powers no one knows about. Where'd you learn that weird where'd you learn that weird knowledge? If time like that ever comes, run. Don't count on me to be able to save us all. Are you not one of those hot headed characters who would lunge at the final boss when it appears too early in the prologue while yelling looks like I have to do everything here at the aspiring heroes and helping them get away? No. Are you one of those who look like experienced seniors on the side of justice but are actually a double agent who works for the final boss and is planned to fake their death in an important battle where they would later assume a false identity and go against the protagonist? I have to say, you're quite imaginative. And neither of those scenarios sounds like a good ending for me. It sounds more dramatic if our story is a novel or movie. Dramatic plot and complex character relationships have always been what captivates readers and the audience. You say so. Anyway, we should focus on the mission first. Not being able to follow Isla's train of thought, Trojan decides to direct the conversation back to the mission. We're almost above our destination. At Trojan's reminder, three of them walk over to the window and look out. Bursting out of the clouds, the transport craft steadily descends into the troposphere. The three start to catch glimpses of Constellia through the window. The last man-made city of the Golden Age. Hints of nervousness can be heard from Sika's voice. This is her first mission after her original squad was disbanded. She does not want this mission to be a failure, either. Don't worry. Captivated by the soft whisper by her ear, she turns to look at Isla, who is quietly staring out the window. Those words of comfort were so soft as if they were never spoken at all. Placing her hand on the window, Isla stares at the mirage of a city, like a seasoned adventurer who finally found the new world. A question pops up in Siko's mind. What is the cause of this expression on her face? But this is swept away by the engines roaring as they land. Alright, I wonder what awaits us. I have to say, I love the fact that they give Isla one of the best, um, like anime expressions where the character is talking, but the eyes are closed and they're like smiling. That's just like the whole like, he is just great. The Boulevard Montmartre at night, adventurers are marching into a new world. Even when they stepped foot on the ground, the sight in front of them still seems unreal. What surrounds the city is a bunch of ruins, just as the Intel Babylonia had stated. Originally, Constellia was supposed to stretch on for tens of thousands of square kilometers, a scale as large as Kowloon. The numbered cities from the post-pandemic age are like children's sand castles in comparison. But that unattained glory of the past is merely an unachievable fantasy to current humans. Constellia, shooting star that graced humanity at the end of the Golden Age, has long disappeared from the pages of history with the outbreak of the punishing virus. But now, though it may be small, a miracle has happened without people noticing. As if time reversal magic had been cast on the city, the further into the ruins they go, the more orderly their surroundings become. Until the point they reach an invisible line that separates the area. As they cross the line, all the weeds and trash on the ground are replaced by neatly planned roads. Crumbled buildings with battered walls are now brand new skyscrapers. It is as if the city is alive and hidden in the wilderness. Yet, the most surprising part is not how out of place the city is. Strange towers standing at the center of all this contradiction. A windmill. The huge blades of the tower spin slowly like a vortex, attracting the eyes of visitors. Although we've seen the vague outlines of it in the images, this is more than I imagined. If one is to judge purely based on visual impact, 
and the hetero tower made of punishing virus would have won. Yet the windmill in the distance exudes solemnity and beauty. There's literally just a giant fucking windmill. There's one there, and there. I know that Golden Age cities tend to favor exaggerated landmarks, but a windmill is a first for me. Hmm. When we talk about windmills. Oh, you're thinking of Don Quixote, right? I, why did I why did I feel like that's where this was gonna go? Fantasizing to be a famous knight, Don Quixote mistook a windmill to be a giant and charged at it with a spear, only to crash into a wall again and again. Doesn't seem positive just from the synopsis. What was their intention to make the most eye-catching building in the city like that? That? I don't know. This. This. This face right here. This is. This is peak. This is. This is great. Just the. Eyes closed. A little. A little smile. That is. Perfection. You're not even going to try to explain it. There are a thousand hamlets if there are a thousand readers. My interpretation may not be what the designer had intended. And we just got here. <clears throat> There's a limit to the information we can gather by just looking at the tower. This kind of tall buildings are usually used as electromagnetic wave towers. According to Babylonia, the only reason why we were not able to detect the city earlier is because the tower was sending out deceiving signals. That windmill may be some sort of huge electromagnetic interference device. It may also function as a central purification filter looking at the low punishing virus concentration here. Huh. If the windmill is the center of the city, then we should be able to find answers there. You're technically right, but it's not so simple. Turning towards the direction of the voice, I see a construct with short lilac hair walking over. Are you members of Iris Warbler? You're half an hour late. Does none of you own a working watch? You're... Lena. Isla, Sika, and... Trojan. She does not answer Isla's question. Instead, she quickly inspects the members of the squad. I already know about you and Iris Warbler, so we can skip the introductions. I will be joining this mission as a reserve member. Pleasure to be working with you. She gives an expressionless nod, not showing a bit of pleasure on her face. Welcome to the squad. Isla smiles as usual and reaches out her hand. Uh. Facing the palm awaiting her, Lena purses her lips and briefly shakes Isla's hand before quickly withdrawing her hand. Enough with the introductions. Let's get to the main event. Let me share with you some intel I gathered on this city. You've already started exploring this city. Yes, I'm a construct built for recon work. I've been here a few days, already, so I took the opportunity to investigate the city a bit. After comparing my intel with Babylonia's, let me answer some queries you may have first. To start off with, how this city came to be, as the general staff had su suspected, the city is intended, currently maintained by mechanoids. The city is indeed currently maintained by mechanoids, and according to my observations, their AI levels have exceeded their original threshold. Then it really is like the orphanage. Not quite. In most areas, the mechanoids are not aggressive towards outsiders. Their behavioral patterns is a bit unique, at least to me it's a bit incomprehensible. But based on my observation, there's nothing of interest in, in the outer parts. It may, look glam it may look glamorous, yet there's nothing but empty shells inside. It may sound confusing if you can't see it. So let's do as Isla suggested and head towards the center first. I'll lead the way. Under Lena's lead, Iris Warbler sets off for the windmill by w walking along the main road. And what a... What an image this is. I list just a short break as they reach a plaza near the windmill. They are almost at the core of Constellia, 
and they have yet to encounter a single mechanoid up until this point. The spinning windmill, the flashing building lights, and the irregularly changing signal lights all signify that this city is currently operating due to some unknown existence. Something just feels off. Is the only one out of the four who has actually lived in the Golden Age. Trojan sighs at the clean streets and endless lines of buildings. Different from Babylonia, which is heaven for only a chosen few. Earth used to be covered in bustling cities that could house millions of people. Did people of the Golden Age live in places like this? Not all of them. At least when I was born, more than 90% of human settlements have been, have been highly urbanized. Although not all cities were as grand as this one, they were definitely better than our conservation areas nowadays, with no problem supporting the daily lives of its citizens. Most of the production process was carried out by machines. Humans were free to live their dreams. The Renaissance, the Age of Enlightenment, the Industrial Revolution, the flower of civilization was able to bloom thanks to hundreds of years of history. And that is the Golden Age. What we see now is just the tip of the iceberg. Yet the outbreak of the Punishing Virus was able to destroy all of that within decades. How ironic. Sadly, that is also true. Humans nowadays can only try to comprehend the knowledge of the Golden Age through images and books. Even the professionals at the WGAA, there's always a barrier when we try to understand the thoughts and concepts back then. Even when humans win against the punishing virus and rebuild their civilization, there will never be another Golden Age. However, ever since the Hetero Tower was reversed, it is rumored that Babylonia has been planning the reconstruction of the surface. The discovery of, of Constellia at this point in time is too much of a coincidence. This area has always been a dead zone. How were mechanoids able to rebuild a city without being infected? Put that question aside for a moment. If mechanoids only wanted to secure their living space, there's no need to preserve the area, this area to perfection like this. Trying their best to preserve these ruins from the past it is not because of nostalgia. Isn't the goal of our mission to find that out? Dana removes herself from the others, staring blankly into the distance. By the way, why did you join this squad? With your qualifications, you could have joined any squad you fancied. Are you secretly an art lover? Uh, that's my choice. It doesn't concern you. Aw, you're not even going to satiate my curiosity for a bit. You're the one talking, Trojan. I hate people who pretend to be mysterious. Since we're teammates, I thought I'd be able to know more about the task force from you guys. My frame data and non-confidential qualifications are all listed on the squad list. The other parts do not concern you. They're irrelevant to the mission. I wish to decrease the frequency of small talk. We're a squad, not a tourist group. So cold. As I and the others were chatting away, Tika had been trying to re-establish contact with HQ from her personal terminal. No use. It just won't connect. It's not going to work. I've already tried it. The city is using some unique interference that blocks all electromagnetic signals from outside. All normal long distance communication devices are useless here. But, our short distance comms within the squad should not be affected. We can also locate each other through mind connection. Right, about the abnormal mechanoid in this city. I have a few pictures, it should be clearer than the ones Babylonia has. Let me send them to you. Oh, I guess there's no need. Lena looks towards the corner of the street. Create. Create. I have to finish creating before Matisse 
My work is a hundred times better than his. <laughs> the mechanoid passes through the street without noticing the four of them in the plaza. Is that the abnormal mechanoid mentioned in the report? Since he's here, why don't we follow him? It's part of our investigations. You're right. We should record his behavioral patterns. We should record his behavioral patterns. The mechanoid finally stops in front of a city wall. The wall is already covered in all kinds of colors and shapes. He activates the spray paint module connected to his arm and splatters new colors on these rainbow walls. As long as I can cover this wall with my colors, then area B2 will belong to us. The fantastical mechanoid impressionists. Those damn surrealist mechanoid falvists. Thinking they could surpass me in the understanding of colors by using new palette modules. What a joke. I, the great Basile, will not permit that. A bit of color here. And then edit this part. The fantastical mechanical impressionists will reclaim the city while you cowards are too scared to come out. <laughs> that laugh sounds so evil. Is that really something a mechanoid can generate? <coughs> In a corner, the members of Iris Warbler are observing this mechanoid who calls himself Basile. And is he... painting? Wondrous, isn't it? A lot of mechanoids here do that. Did you notice those incomprehensible ads and graffiti when we were walking on the streets? Those are all their masterpieces. These mechanoids seem to possess a deep obsession with art. They even have different factions who occupy different areas of the city. Mechanoids obsessed with art. Would it be similar to Nozzle? whom Grey Raven found before. I remember Nozzle was kept by the WGAA for research after Grey Raven retrieved him. Do you know anything, Isla? Uh, Isla? And just as Sika turns to ask Isla for her opinions, Isla has already stepped out of their hiding place. The pink-haired construct storms towards the doodling Basil, her eyes filled with rage that could melt even steel. <laughs> oh no, they pissed off the artist. Ah, I can't stand this anymore. Isla raises her fist and shouts towards the mechanoid. Hey, you! What do you think you're doing? What? Startled by Isla's sudden outburst, Basil frantically tries to scurry away without a specific direction in mind. He ends up crashing into whole w the wall with a bang and falling over as he loses his balance. The whole scene is quite comedic. This wall was originally covered with someone else's art, was it not? How could you ruin others' work without permission? I don't know what kind of ideals war you have going on or if it's a personal grudge. But if you can't pay the minimal respect towards other creators, then don't expect others to respect your work. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Don't take me away. I don't want to be disassembled. Eh? Lena is dumbfounded by Isla's actions. Is that what they call the Rage of Artists? This is the first time I've seen Isla so angry. Yes, that is in fact what they call the Rage of Artists. Either way, let's go. What should I do? Cervantes was right. Disley and Monet are both gone. And now me. You really gave him quite a fright, Isla. <laughs> was I too aggressive? After Isla calms down, she looks at the trembling Basile, realizing that she went a bit overboard. She scratches her head apologetically. But if we don't properly educate him on his behavior, he won't notice his mistake. Parts, disassembly, sob. I still haven't revived fantastical mechan mechanical impressionism, yet my end is here. He's so different from how he was before. Isn't he overreacting a bit? I didn't say anything that scary. Um, we're not going to do anything to you. Really? Are you not constructs from Babylonia? The ones who want to bring us back and dissect us for research? We're from Babylonia, but we wouldn't do anything like that without reason. No, since he's an abnormal mechanoid of the city, isn't it our responsibility to send a sample back to the Science Council? Trojan, stop teasing him like that. At least for now, we just want to find out more about this city. 
But he did mention other mechanoids being abducted. I think that's not a lie. If these mechanoids are trying to avoid being captured by someone, then what he saw before makes sense. Are there other teams here carrying out missions other than us? If that's the case, HQ would have notified us. Hmm. And the mechanoid he referred to as Cervantes. He seems to know that Babylonia was going to send someone over. Well, to be fair, we were invited over. Um, you're Basile, right? Who is this Cervantes you speak of? And what is it about Babylonia abducting mechanoids? If you answer our questions truthfully, we'll let you go. Ayla kneels down and smiles at Basile. Cervantes is our spiritual leader. If we followed him here and rebuilt the abandoned city to how it is now. Us mechanoids who want to learn more about the art left behind by the sage have turned this city into our base. We want to recreate the emotions that the sage had inspired in us. But Cervantes never joins us. He's always in his museums and the tower left behind from the Golden Age. Two months ago, he suddenly announced people from Babylonia would be coming to the city and told us to hide. He even went as far as to ask us to leave the city. But the streets are a battlefield. If we don't occupy it, they'll be occupied by those surrealist mechanical bauvists and multidimensional mechanical cubists. Us fantastical mechanical impressionists are the originals and most traditional. We cannot lose to those who came after. So, Cicely and Monet didn't heed Cervantes' warning, and they were never seen again after coming out to the streets. Cervantes. Looks like he's the mechanoid we're looking for. But, two months ago, Babylonia still hadn't found out about the existence of Constelia yet two months ago. Looks like the situation is more complicated than we think. The descendants have pretended to be constructs from Babylonia. With the effect of the hetero tower, it would look like normal constructs if they suppressed the punishing virus within them. Hmm, we can't rule out that possibility. Two months ago, someone from Babylonia. Whale song signal. Elena. No, you wouldn't do something like this. I'm sure you wouldn't. Lena, have you been to the museums Basile mentioned? No, I've only investigated the perimeter, but the museums surround the windmill. So if we want to get to the windmill, we should pass the museums. Looks like we got a clear objective and route now. Let's go. The four of them replan their route. Just as they're about to leave, Isla stop. She look she turns to look at the wall covered in graffiti of curious shapes and symbols. Basil has already stood up, but when his gaze meets Isla's, he starts to tremble again. Isla just smiles at him. Art, created by mechanoids, huh? I would love to understand it more in depth if possible. About the differences in the factions you mentioned and why they fight with one another. And the art of the sage you worship so much. Please, tell us more about you guys if we do meet again. But before that, remember to properly apologize to the artists of this painting... Got it? Of course. Well then, goodbye. Alright. Since the situation doesn't look that good, you should get back to somewhere safe. We'll keep an eye out for your missing friends. And once this is all over, you can have a proper showdown against the other factions. If you're going to win, might as well do it with style. Hylas signs Basila V sign with her fingers, signaling victory and peace before rejoining her teammates. Basile stares after Isla, lost in thought until she disappears on the horizon. For some reason, he is reminded of a wanderer they had met not long ago. It is Selena. Art by Mechanoids. I'm really interested in your creations. Can you tell me more about you guys? What's Selena? Oh, already going into a battle on position eight. Hey. The extension of the red carpet stops at a shut door. 
This museum is the outermost one among all. Iris Warbler has reached here without a problem. From the decorations, sculptures, and words on the outside, it no doubt screams welcome to all passerbys. But paired with deafening silence, it makes the whole scene a bit eerie. Looks like it's not just somewhere one passes to get, to get to the windmills. It is worth investigating. And so the three constructs look over at Sika. Let's investigate it then. Roger. Not wasting a second, Isla makes her way over to the control panel and wakes up the system. It was not as hard as she imagined. The door to the museum opened after a few clicks of a button. Now for the final question. Who should be the vanguard in this limited space? Looking at Tika, who's deep in thought, Trojan steps forward. Even though she keeps insisting that she isn't at her prime anymore, she's still a tank. Leave it to me. Isla shouts passionately as she enters the museum. <coughs> Lena and Trojan glance at each other until the later shrugs. Then she has a new frame, then let her lead. Good chance to observe firsthand what Kaleido can do. Okay. Yeah, I'll probably keep this to just maybe two hours. Choose a note to enter station house. In the beginning. Stuff like this it makes me like, I want to, maybe I should try to get into 3D. So this is the art museum. Welcome, visitors. Allow me to take you through the exhibition. This way, please. Of course, I'd look like a Roman statue. Constellia, Central Art Museum Hall. An art museum built by mechanoids. What will show up in the hall? Please bear with me for one moment. Here is an overview of the art museum. Ooh. Please follow this order and start your tour. What's that? Hologram. Hey, this feels incredibly mechanical. Uh, step A. Displaying detailed information about the Arctic Root Union Hall. Arctic Root Union. An economic union formed by the trading boards around the Arctic Circle, one of the biggest four economic entities in the Golden Age. Hmm. Oh, right, that was. Okay, so I've already seen that. to do something with this. Recreating data. <coughs> oh. Wait, are they going to have me fight a recreation of Rosetta? <coughs> the Arctic Root Union. Uh, I really miss the strong alcohol flavored electrolyte they made there. It's the best drink to have after a mission. I'm listening to Forest Guards a few times during my ecological missions and they... Uh, it went too fast! Recreating data. Oh, this is probably Kowloon then. Let's 
explain detailed information about the Kowloon Hall. Regional commercial organization in the Golden Age and the coastal cities of East Asia with well-developed trade and shipbuilding businesses and a Kua Air class armed dreadnought Nitre is one of the biggest four economic entities in the world. Kowloon. Been there several times after the Nitre dock. Wish I could see Kowloon's glory during the Golden Age. Please continue. Uh, okay. Follow the... Follow the path, follow the path. Displaying detailed information about the Forest Park Hall. Peaceful and quiet Forest Park, one of the famous Golden Age human tourist spots. This is... Do you recognize this place? It doesn't ring a bell for me. No, not really. Displaying about the hall. Encrypted data. Hmm. Something, 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 something. Data encrypted. Is this a bug? That gypsum statue surely doesn't seem smart. Please browse only in the designated order. Please browse only in the designated What's happening? Did we trigger anything? No, it doesn't seem like the case. <clears throat> Please return to the display panel. Your journey is... Ah. Anyways, everyone get ready for battle. Well then. Let me go first. Here we go. How is that? What? Amazing colors, what a unique fighting style. Alright, let's see the super. All combat factions with Collider Flame are now available. Let's go, Isla. Okay, she is fun to play. <laughs> the lobby alarm is still not disarmed. The mechanic statues continue to attack towards Iris Warbler. <coughs> the statues' movements are not complex. They have the advantage in numbers. No matter how many they defeat, there are always new ones that appear out of nowhere to replace them. Pika cannot predict where the next batch of enemies will strike next, and since Iris Warbler is still a new team, the cooperation is far from flawless. If they continue on like this, it's just a matter of time for the mechanical statues to break through their defenses. 
they keep coming. The bullets rapidly fired from her tactical pistol hit the weak joints of the statues. Ika was the best shooter in her class, but no matter how accurately she shoots now, it still cannot make up for a disadvantage in armor. She has to shoot half of her magazine before the mechanical statue ceases its movement. The usefulness of a commandant in this level of battle is limited. <laughs> get behind me. You'll be in trouble if you get hurt. The alloy arrow soars through the air and pierces through the few statues in front of Sika with force. This isn't ending anytime soon. We need to find a way to make them stop. Sparks fly from the beam blade and heavy tonpas as they hit the statues. Isla and Trojan has been wearing bearing most of the burden as vanguards. Isla can still manage with her new frame, but this sequela of mind damage is starting to show for Trojan as time goes on. We probably activated the security system of the museum. If we're talking about golden age formats, then these security statues are most probably remotely linked to the system. Thanks for the info, but what's the point? point is, if we can hack the firewall of the museum and shut off the alarm, then the statues won't move anymore. And does anyone here have a frame that has hacking functions? Heads up, not me. I may have the same name as a famous computer virus, but don't expect an old relic from the golden age like me to be able to hack. This is the first time I'm seeing people say they're useless with such confidence. Fine, I'll hack the system. But I'm not a support type, so I'll have to use more primitive methods. Hang in there till I get back. Relying on the spatial data from the scan, Lena finds a hidden node port in the lobby. Takes out a specialized arrow from her quiver. This arrow contains a mini terminal, which can utilize a construct's computing power to break through from outside. She plugs this arrow, which is connected to her frame, into the port. Instantly, a large amount of data swarms her mind. She focuses on processing these data shards, trying to find a point for her to penetrate through. So she's Hawkeye. Damn it, this frame... With Lena lost as an offensive asset, Ika had to get Isla and Trojan to shrink the defense area, but that also implies that the enemies will attack more frequently. As a commandant, she could feel the continuous turmoil in Trojan's mind. Why do I feel like there's an increase in enemies? It's the system's level 2 security protocol. It detected me trying to hack it through the port. Give me some more time. Waves after waves of mechanical structures, statues appear with no end in sight. They seem to have determined Lena to be the biggest threat, targeting their attacks at Lena, making it harder for Isla and Trojan to defend. Only I can help. Lena, you're 11 o'clock. Enemies are heading over. Trojan hits a statue in the head with her tonfa as she turns to warn Lena. She's already at her limits trying to take care of those mechanoids in front of her and cannot take on any more. <coughs> Damn it, just a bit more. Don't worry, I got you covered. Idiot, what are you doing? Ika already lunged towards the statue before Lena could finish her sentence. She is as nimble as an apodidae. Her tactical dagger slips into her hand and she accurately stabs the statue in its neck joint. The dagger emits an electromagnetic pulse, instantly demobilizing the statue. Not wasting a second, she turns and pounces onto another mechanoid. Rapidly pulling the trigger and shooting directly into the statue's chest. Annihilating two statues in a row with a surprising imposing manner, Pika grits her teeth and shoots at nearby statues with her pistol. But even the newest pistol with expanded magazines would come a moment when it exhausts itself. Without a choice, she smashes her pistol into the memory shell of the statue in front of her. Its plaster face cracks, but the red glow of its eyes indicates that it that this hit was not enough to take it out. This queen. A howling s sparks shines in front of Sika. An ice blue energy stream swipes past, blasting away the mechanoids in front of Sika like a lawnmower. Not far away, the muzzle of Isla's gun is sizzling with white smoke, indicating that the energy blast was shot from it. Why didn't you take that out earlier? Well, this is my last resort, because it was made according to the blast hammer data of Shire. I didn't know if it'd work or not. Karanina insisted I add this function when I was brainstorming this new frame. I really should thank her when we get back. The 
The beam blade flickers as if this one hit has used up all its stored up energy. Alright, and disarm. Just as Lena announced this, the blaring alarm finally stops and the remaining statues cease their attacks. Sika, are you alright? Isla half kneels and extends her hand to Sika, helping her up. Yes, I'm fine. Sorry, I didn't expect them to suddenly attack us like that and I panicked. It's not your fault. They seemed pretty normal at the beginning. I don't recall us doing anything that could have enraged them. I don't think we triggered the alarm. Or is the trap set by the mechanic, the mechanoid called Cervantes? Hmm. Isla studies the scattered statue pieces on the ground. After a series of fierce battles, this meticulously designed space is now in ruins. Spending so much effort in curating this museum and just letting it get destroyed as a battlefield to get rid of intruders. Just as she gets lost in deep, deep in thought, a small wave of quarreling can be heard from behind. What in the world were you thinking back there? Why did you protect me? The usual calm and collected Lena is now furiously shouting at Sika. What if you get seriously injured? What should the constructs connected to you do then? Her eyes are clouded by a complicated haze, as if she, what she is seeing is not Sika who is standing in front of her, but a past memory she does not dare to recall. You're not a newbie on the first mission. Do you not possess a bit of common sense? Even if I get injured, I just have to change my parts and get fixed, and even if I die here, you can still lead the remaining members to the finish the mission. But you? The core of the squad is their commandant. Did the FOS not teach you the survival rate of a squad without a commandant? Why did you respond to that squad's SOS signal? We should focus on the battle on the front lines. Don't you know to weigh the pros and cons before making a decision as a commandant? Squad is stranded deep within enemy territory. It's a suicide mission. Your job is to stabilize our minds with your mind beacon. Tactics? What kind of tactics can someone who has never set foot in a war in war come up with? I... I admit that my actions were rash. As a commandant, I should have prioritized my own safety. Because on the battlefield, the commandant is the construct's lifeline. But in our case, just now, protecting you was the priority because without your... You hacking the systems, the battle would have been prolonged and we would have been at even more of a disadvantage. That was my judgment of the situation, as the Commandant. Lena relaxes her fists and sighs defeatedly. I apologize for my own outburst. It is partly my fault as a scout for not being able to predict the situation. Let's not waste any more time here and move on. <clears throat> as if running away from something... Lena leaves the lobby through the exit on the side. Let's go. Trojan pats Sika's shoulder before following after Lena. I think she was worried about your safety. I know. Oh, the girls are caring for each other. The door opens and combines once more. Compared to how they entered... Without thought last time, the four of them are much more cautious. Metal walls are covered in a thin layer of frost. Trojan lightly knocks it with her weapons and inspects the shards that have fallen to the ground. Hmm. Nothing unusual about this. It's just frozen due to the low temperature. Looks like the theme here is Winter Wonderland. After inspecting the area, they find a refrigeration unit as ex expected. There's no control panel, <coughs> so we'll shut, have to shut it down by force. By force? You mean... Lena draws her bow and aims for the air outlet. Stop! Please stop! A hoarse voice suddenly yells out. Lena immediately changes her target and aims towards the origin of the voice. Please don't break that device. That'll destroy the exhibits in the museum. The four members of Iris Warbler finally take a look at the mechanoid that confronted them. But don't hurt me. I'm just the messenger. As if to authenticate its identity, the mechanoid crouches down, the parts on its body start to expand. It slowly builds a device they have never seen before, and a light flashes on top of it. The light slowly forms into a human shape, or more precisely, it looks like a hologram of a human. Greetings, guests from Babylonia. The voice is not emitted from the device, but the speaker is on the exhibition hall. Hello, who are you? I am this city's 
temporary administrator. I am responsible for the operation of mechanoids in this city. And those statues. Those are the security guards who protect these exhibit exhibition halls. It was not my intention to attack you. What do you mean? Mr. Administrator, I... Let me introduce myself. I'm Cervantes. And you must be Isla. Cervantes' hologram stops in front of Isla and inspects her. <coughs> you know me. You can say that. Since you're standing here, that means part of my plan succeeded. Part of your plan succeeded? Wait, Signal General Wells mentioned. No need to fret. I just wanted to invite you to the city as guests. I was at the welcome committee just now then. You guys sure are passionate. Cervantes does not explain, nor does he seem to want to explain. He continues staring into Isla's eyes before glancing at the other members. Ah, that really is. He quietly sneaks over to Lena's side as Cervantes keeps sizing them up. Lena, can you determine where he really is? <clears throat> if you give me that robot, then I may be able to trace where he's sending the signals from. However, as they are plotting in whispers, Cervantes suddenly directs the conversation to them. Sorry, but please refrain from doing that. I come in peace. Of course, I wouldn't ask you to trust me completely. The situation of the city is currently a bit complicated, although I do not disapprove of it. Cervantes, if you really mean us no harm, then please answer our questions honestly. What is your plan? Under the brim... The pair of red eyes look over to Isla. As if in contemplation, Devantes only speaks after a while. For now, I just hope for you to enjoy the exhibitions in this museum. Especially you, Isla of the WGAA. Me? Isla is startled by his unexpected answer. Just as she is about to ask more in depth, Cervantes already answered her. Look at it as a request from me. Fellow artist, I've buried all that I have seen, lost and experienced here, and that of what, and that of what the city named Constellia, an unfinished city that only exists in a fantasy, had experienced at the end of the Golden Age. I'm sure the WGAA is interested in this. I hope that you can give me an answer after seeing everything. Also, I want to see how well this squad can operate. It will be a truly valuable experience. Now, please follow this mechanoid and enjoy the exhibition. With that, Cervantes' hologram disappears, leaving them with an empty exhibition hall and the mechanoid who is reconstructing itself. Please follow me. Follow you? Is this a joke? Wait. Let's do as he says for now. Are you serious? One of the reasons for the founding of Iris Warbler is to retrieve information about the Golden Age civilization. What Cervantes says is true, and he knows what happens to Constellia. Then we need the information from him. Mm hmm. Hmm. If we don't do as he says, it may lead to bloodshed like earlier again. We're already not a squad specializing in battle. We should act carefully. And these exhibitions look quite interesting. There's a need for further investigation. Fine. Is everyone at the WGAA like this? If this is what Commandant and Captain decide, then I don't object. We just have to be careful. Whoa, is that a replica of the largest Moses-class icebreaker from Murmansk port back in the Golden Age? Or, before Lena could even finish her sentence, Isla's attention is already fully captivated by the exhibi exhibi exhibits in the hall. When it, my brain was struggling between exhibitions and exhibits and it was just like a... Oh wait, Isla, we need to maintain formation. Let's be the ones on guard and leave the investi investigating to them. Uh, Lena pinches the bridge of her nose as she tries to soothe this headache induced by the recklessness while she follows them. Winter landscape. Who's that? Ah. Please follow me. A hall in the Arctic Route Union style. Bigger than I expected. Stay sharp. Let's just follow it. Trojan <laughs> instead of Trojan. Wow. Another 
Uh. Uh. Spelling mistake. Welcome to the Arctic Hall. Before we start to explore, I'd like to ask you something. The Arctic Circle, the pole of the Earth, is the coldest yet. Humans never give up exploring it. Golden Age, the Arctic Root Union, completed, conquered it. And I want to reproduce the persistent struggle here and observe. To live like the... Are they going to test their combat ability? Don't break the formation, everyone. Interesting, get ready, Evan. Is in charge of the halls. A squid that squirts. It might get, get along with its kind. And my own... Data recorded. Comparing data battle power is 24.36% four <coughs> above the expected value. Speculated reason. The leading construct's performance was further enhanced in the Arctic Hall's environment. Comparing phase 2 of the test. Starting now. Errr. <coughs> oh, now we gotta deal with the polar bears. A military mechanoid this time, huh? Oh, I can call this a challenge. Data recorded. Comparing data calculation error. Induction failed. A total of 28 mismatches with the previous simulation results have been found. Has the Arctic Root Union been fighting these bionics all along? Analysis failed. Analysis failed. Doesn't seem quite right. Did the failed analysis trigger the highest level of the battle power test system? The highest level, huh? Because we can't hold back then. Data recorded, you've defeated two waves of bionics. Your performance is better than 51.5% of mechanoid visitors. Speculated reason, analysis declined. Test over, granting access to the hall. Restoring the exhibit for test purpose. Dear visitor, I sincerely invite you to explore this hall. Once you have finished, you can come to me anytime so I can take you to the second section of this hall. Finally, it's over. Let's check out this hall before entering the next stage. Ooh. Bionic SO-79 Production date 21 oh, er, oh, er, Service time unknown Bionic found in ruins modified from Snow Owl that was originally designed for military reconnaissance purposes to be a robot pet for kids It said that humans would put flowers in the muzzles to express their desire for peace conflicts and meaningless behaviors but Ooh, these big guys. Commandant, the Babylonia Task Force Commandant, who played a big role in the Arctic Root Union incident, faced the first humanoid hybrid construct Ambaria with the human body. Hero of Babylonia, Ascendant, failed to analyze the detailed data of that human. This is a replica of the combat suit that human wore during the battle in the Arctic area. Oh yeah, the excess suit. Oh, these rabbits. Production date unknown, service time unknown, recycle log. Bionics found after the huge tide. Their memory shells are completely broken and can't be fixed. Amberia, the forest guards, the ascendants, and Babylonia. Why, they're kind of cool looking. Production date, uh, recycle log. Military bionic found among scrap machines in the Arctic Root Union's abandoned firm military industrial base. As a mechanoid without logic circuits capable of deep learning, it was designed solely for strategic attacks. 
Order, obedience, discipline, violence, and subduel. Was this how the Attribute Union achieved unification? I mean, maybe. Is there something I'm missing? I think. Oh. What would you like to see? Narwhal, Derek. Details unknown. Okay. Uh, Moses class icebreaker, naval. One of the Arctic Root Union's biggest Moses class icebreakers equipped with two RPNF 310 nuclear reactors. Capacity, 80 persons. Tonnage, 35,550 tons. Load, 100k tons. Jesus. Uh, play recording. This is Fleming speaking. This will be Naval's final voyage. Corrupted have destroyed almost half of the engine room. We did everything we could, but it is still leaking. In three days, Naval will be lost forever. Uh, fortunately, all those who are in love with her will go down together. First mate said there would be a aurora tonight. I hear whale songs around. I'll get everyone on the deck to witness our ending. May the Arctic Root Union live forever. Dang. Okay. What would you like to do? Head deeper into the hall. Understood. Please get ready. Get 100%. Alright, let's keep going. Ika, that person over there. Speaking of the Arctic Root Union. All right, let's start the boss fight. Hmm, even as a puppet, you still know who's the strong one. Let's end. <laughs> Watch out, it's coming for us. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that's right, this is... Ooh, okay, that was a little tough. Uh, we finally won. The blade of Isla's gun lance flashes past and Rosetta's huge body finally falls. Tika holds the empty grenade gun. Her body quivers due to exhaustion. The weapon box you were carrying all this time. This is what was in it. And ammo for Isla's weapon and spare arrows for Lena. I only brought this gun just in case since I'm more familiar with this kind of weapon. It wouldn't have worked earlier when we were inside, but I'm glad I was able to help now. I'm impressed that you can identify its behavioral pattern so quickly. If it wasn't for your plan, this would have been a tough fight. Ah, no. It's only because Rosetta is in Babylonia and I had the honor of meeting her a few times when I was training under Vanessa. Humanoid hybrid constructs are still very rare nowadays. That recorded down all of her information and battle data. Classic valedictorian thing to do. 
is that it is someone who can fight against the strongest ascendant, Alpha. Even though it is not a real thing, it was still very overwhelming. That mechanoid really is something to be able to make this look exactly like the real deal. I also don't understand why he made a replica in the first place. But if we need a representative for an Arctic Root Union themed exhibition, then Rosetta is the most suitable. I'm wary of the technology he possesses. Also, I've never seen the real Rosetta in action. This imposter showed some quite destructive power. Together with those statues earlier, if Babylonia has to go against that, he not only reconstructed a whole city, he also possesses the battle data of Babylonian constructs and the technology to recreate it all. Exposing all this to Babylonia just to use Constellia as bait to have the WGAA send members over to investigate. I don't know, there's too little for us to conclude right now. At least, he has said he doesn't wish us to harm us. Now we can only do as he said and explore these exhibits. Though this feeling... This feeling like being led on a wild goose chase is a bit unpleasant. Well, the road is always rocky on the way to fight the final boss. That aside, I think we cooperated pretty well just now. Ika's commanding is more calm than before too. That helped quite a bit. I'll give her a 5 out of 10. Don't let her get to her head. From afar, Lena returns to the others after inspecting the area. Commendable that she thought of using specialized electromagnetic shells to restrict the enemy's movements, but if it hadn't worked, or if it was not created completely according to Rosetta's original data, then you would have exposed yourself to danger. You could have used me for remote restriction, increasing the battle's efficiency. Ah. I found something interesting. Without waiting for Sika to react, Lena throws something over to Isla. What's this? Isla opens her hand. A small data chip lays in her palm. Silver white chip shines like a fake snow, like the fake snow on the ground. According to my scan results, this chip should have memory data on it. You can read it with the port as constructs have. This is Cervantes. Looks like this is the thing he said he left behind. There may be valuable information on it. Then should we decide who reads it? The three of them all look to the, in the same direction. All right. I'll do it. Yeah. God, that was actually kind of long. Uh, okay, I'm going to take a quick break. Uh, get some more coffee and stuff so I have, you know, liquid to drink. And I'll be right back.
Okay, I'm back. Okay, let's continue. Sorry about that. The rooks have returned. What can be seen in his eyes? Hey, Carl, wake up. Come on. Voice command detected. Exiting sleep mode. Visual module reconnected. Data change detected. Automatically generating a lo log according to protocol. <coughs> Confirming. World time synchronization. 023 AM. UTC plus 4. Personality simulation online. Load complete. Saving log in text form. Yesterday was the 23rd day since we left Murmansk port. According to plan, the Moses class icebreaker naval left Barentschavet on the 22nd day and entered the border of the Greenland Sea and the Norwegian Sea. After periodically ingesting hydramine, Michel's condition of seasickness has improved. It is the 7th time he has tried to paint on the decks. He persisted for 30 minutes this time, but ultimately had to stop due to the strong wind. In the evening, Captain Fleming caught a cod that weighed two pounds and he enjoyed sashimi together with Michel. Daily alcohol consumption is 23% over the doctor's recommended amount. He received a verbal promise when trying to stop Michel from consuming more, but according to the past six months, there is an 89% chance that he will not keep his promise. 16.47 p.m. UTC plus 4. Michel went back to his room to sleep. 21 minutes later than his average sleep time. Recording complete. Releasing cash. Restarting log mode. Good morning, Michel. This is not your usual waking time. Is there an emergency? Uh, of course it's an emergency. We're about to venture into the target sea area. Captain says the weather will be good for the next few days. Everyone's excited. You look very happy, Michel. I was still missing the lands a few days ago. But now my love is for the sea. Humans really aren't fickle. Humans really are fickle, aren't we, Carl? Three months ago you said you would stab your eyes with a pencil if you had to watch another one of those rubbish films by UC Entertainment. Two weeks later you secretly went to see the premiere of Beyond the Wild by yourself. I think this supports your idea. The main character wasn't that good, but there was a little boy in one of the supporting roles who blew us away with his acting. Wait, how'd you know I went to watch it? I thought I hid it from you. Different from humans, mechanoids have more ways to obtain information. If the need arises, I can find out everything about you. Eh, I guess that's true. You always remember everything. Come, Carl. Let's go to the decks. Michel pats his assistant on the shoulder, greeting him like an old friend like he has for the past ten years. The sun still has not risen above the horizon yet when they push open the cabin doors, but what appears in front of them is not pitch black darkness as they are now near the arctic circle, but a faint aurora dancing across the skies before dawn comes. A lot of crewmates are already on the deck. The day is a resting day on the aurora. Aurora, a whole day of freedom. The Vikings used to think auroras were rays of light reflected from the goddess, goddess Valkyrie's armor. They called, it, they called it God's Skirt. The aurora is believed to lead the souls of dead warriors to Valhalla, where they would bask in eternal glory. This is an old myth passed on for generations, way before the establishment of the Arctic Root Union. Even now, a lot of people in the Union still believe it's true. What about you, Carl? What do you think the Aurora represents? Uh, Mechanoids do not believe in religion. Well, naturally, he does not believe there is a play palace of the gods up above the Auroras. It is merely a reaction brought on by plasma molecules, a visual effect caused by the ionization of molecules in the upper atmosphere when solar wind is captured, 
by Earth's magnetic field. No matter how magnificent or mysterious something is in the eyes of humans, after understanding the mechanics behind it, it no longer retains its fascination. I don't know what kind of answer you're expecting, Michel. He knows, Michel. This artist has a personality that stands out even in the society he is in. Michel would not be asking his ex I would not be asking this, expecting an explanation on how auroras are formed. It's not really an answer I'm expecting to hear, Carl. I just think that this would be a good fuel for your paintings. If you're a creator like me, would you want to paint this scene? I'm not sure, Michel. As long as I download the relevant learning modules, I can use deep learning to master all drawing techniques, imitate the strokes of all famous painters, and even combine these skills to create paintings of auroras no one has ever seen before. Yet, just as you disapprove of the mechanoids currently in art, that is not true creating, isn't it? Imitation and coupling cannot birth new things, but that doesn't mean mechanoids are limited to that. I look forward to the day when mechanoids create real art. It may be too... Long of a wait for someone as old as me. Michel, please do not be pessimistic about your health situation. You still have a lot you want to do. A lot that you will do. You're even responsible for designing that city. It'll become your greatest work. This may just be the selfishness of an artist. Sometimes I feel that I just don't want to let go of the brush. But thanks to that, I'm still fighting to live longer. You're right. I still have things I want to do. And I will do. Heck, isn't that why we're on this ship in the first place? I'm sure you'll be able to return satisfied from this trip. Carl lowers his head as if praying for his master. Look, Carl, something's coming. Pointing at the sea, Michel suppresses his excitement and whispers to Carl. Carl's eyes do not capture anything abnormal. Unlike humans, mechanoids do not possess intuition or the sixth sense. They do not know what it feels like to have a premonition. He remains silent. His logical circuits cannot comprehend how he got the same conclusion as Michel, ignoring all the rigid rules of coding. The deck quiets down as the crewmates all hold their breath. Their hands freeze midair while holding their alcohol. And like the first cry of the world, a huge black and white silhouette jumps, jumps out of the water. hit uh, 20% battery. I need to put my phone to charge one second. Okay. A humpback whale. Huge waves are stirred by the whale, splashing onto Carl and Michel, and also all the crewmates on the deck. The crewmates cheer enthusiastically. They drink in glee, singing sea shanties from the Viking times, celebrating the scene they just witnessed under the auroras of dawn. After the Arctic Route Union was founded, all whale hunting activity was banned around the world and the people devised a new rule. The whales became new nautical guardians. Every time people see a whale, they celebrate to commemorate the encounter. Carl, do you know why whales leap out of the water? About that, there's not a definite biological explanation yet. Maybe it's for communication, or is it a part of their respiration cycle? There are also people who think they got rid of parasites this way. And do you know why humans celebrate it like this? I cannot fully comprehend the psychological reason. The psychological reasons behind this action. But I think it may be similar to the feeling when people see the aurora. When did you learn to be ambiguous, Carl? Michel smiles meaningfully at Carl. Carl once again finds himself unable to analyze Michel's current feelings. 
What I see isn't the whale, but ourselves. We think we are observing the world around us, but in truth, we are all merely looking at ourselves. Ourselves. What did you see, Carl? What was it that you saw when the whale burst through the waters? I... I saw... Recording stop. The memory data finishes playing. Myla opens her eyes and sees the other three looking at her with bated breath. Why is everyone so nervous? They're just worried there may be construct viruses hidden in there since it was left behind by the enemy. I didn't see you guys worrying before when you picked me to read it. Just as a precaution, that seaweed head mechanoid didn't look like someone who would use dirty tricks. But if something did happen, our reliable commandant would have been the first to dive into your mind to save you. Isla, what did you see? Uh, I feel like it stopped at a very crucial moment. Isla tells the others what she saw. Although I had a feeling I didn't expect to actually see Michel from when he was still alive. This memory belongs to that mechanoid named Carl. Although the name is different, if he is Cervantes, then that would explain how he found this city before humans did. That is true. What happened to him in the past few decades that led to him appearing in front of us like this? Creators like to express themselves through their art. What does Cervantes want to convey? Because he saw a frightening battle, and because he had seen the previous glory of the Arctic Root Union, they wanted to record it down permanently. Do you have an idea, Isla? Hmm. Nope. Although I currently don't have any ideas. Even though it was just a scene from a memory. And that it was seen through someone else's eyes. The huge shadow of the whale blocking the breaking of dawn. People breaking through the ice while singing. Heading towards the tip of the world. The ruins of the Naval silently stand atop of the man-made ice. It may not be replicas at all actual pieces of the ocean liner he had been on. The Arctic Root Union's last line of defense, the centaur galloping on the snowfields. He attacked the white-haired Contra countless times and became a dome that sheltered everyone when the cave collapsed. A replica was put here as the last guardian of these images of the past. What he's thinking may be surprisingly simple. What do you mean? It's just a feeling, nothing for sure. A well-planned musical would put its dramatic plot twists in the very end. All reviews before the end do not hold water. This museum is Cervantes' art. We have to at least see it in full before jumping to conclusions. This is not only out of respect for the creator, since he wants something from me who belongs to the WGAA, then I have to respond to him in the WGAA way. It's going to be very tiring saying that every time. Isle of the Dead. His exploration leads him to a dead island. Like the game? In a pitch black hall. A meticulously decorated knight armor is placed in the center of the room. Under the thick visor of the lifeless armor, light flashes irregularly. As if it has a consciousness of its own. He continues to emit this uncomprehensible white noise. As if it is this <coughs> snoozing beast waiting for someone to open its cage. The taciturn construct stands alone on the edge of the tower. He looks down on the surrounding buildings. His eyes are not looking at anywhere specific. Even though he gave his all to reconstruct the city, he does not care for it at all. In human civilization, there is an emotion called homesick. People develop special feelings for the place they were raised in. And when they are away from that place, those emotions get amplified. As the mechanoid assembled and activated in the city, I think it makes sense for me to stay here. But he is different. I do not understand the art he is obsessed about, 
But since we are now back to that this place after all this time, it means the duty we must fulfill is coming to an end. Why does he still look lost? Looking at his figure, this question sometimes comes up in my memory shell. It should not be something I should worry about. Cervantes? Is something the matter? Dulci Dulcinea. Cervantes, you requested for everyone to refrain from going onto the streets for the time being, but some mechanoids are not satisfied by this. As far as I know, a few mechanoids have already snuck out for your, of your designated safe areas to create. I'm not their actual administrator. They have the right to do as they please. Don't worry, I have a backup plan. Now is just not the time for it yet. Once this is over, I will lead all the mechanoids who are willing away. I don't understand, Cervantes. The church has technology that can make the city undetectable to all humans, not only for the church. Constellia is a natural habitat for mechanoids. When you left the Church of Machina and came here all those years ago, you spent a few years time to create an environment suitable for us. Yet, now you invite Babylonia here. Why? The, sh the city is just a shell. It doesn't represent anything. Mechanoids, however, have infinite time. We can always recreate another city that is exactly the same down to the last pebble. And, due to the emergence of the Hero Tower, it's only a matter of time before humans find the city. On top of that, the Sage Machina is back. There's no reason for us to stay here any longer. Cervantes, you didn't answer my question. Why willingly expose ourselves to the humans of Babylonia? Why retrieve that tragic creation of humans? That thing is a product of human will. It showed me some things I didn't notice before, which is why I kept it. And mostly, how should I put it? All of this is for finding an answer. An answer? I've been to lots of places over the years and have witnessed the actions of humans after the outbreak of the punishing virus. The International Space Station, Akdilek, Kowloong, the underground cavern of City 075, Julia Forest Park, Empyria, Lunar Base, and the Red Tide. Even though they never united, even though there are conflicts every time, and even though they have, they all have different ideals and goals. From a lot of mechanoids of the church, humans are weak and helpless, contradicting and incomprehensible. But they can always turn a crisis around at crucial moments creating unexpected miracles. That includes things that cannot be calculated. That includes something that I cannot explain with words. I'm trying to find it. The reason that leads to these results. But all my efforts have ended in failure. Until the hetero tower was reversed, I finally confirmed this and accepted it. Since I cannot find the answer as a mechanoid, why not ask the humans who, have al who already have the answers? Us mechanoids will excel in recreation, not discovery. But what makes you think the humans will do as you wish? No, they will. At least that person from the WGAA will. He will prove to me the results of their hard work of many years. Scanning finished. Data module reading complete. Planning the most suitable route. Lunar, this way. On the empty streets, a white female construct walks together with a... Therianthropic construct. Hmm. Lunar, my man. And Heikma. Lunar. Heikma stops when her comrade does not reply. Nothing. This place is just very impressive. Well... It is a city from the Golden Age, so even just a part of it will be. It's recreated quite accurately. Are you in all and jealous of your senior's achievement as a successor? You really like to hit where it hurts recently. Is this Zero's bad influence? Compared to before, I think my empathetic abilities have increased, so I'm currently testing it. So, was I right? I 
think you should look up what empathetic actually means. But I have to admit, that Mechanoid Cervantes really is something else. I only started painting halfway through my life, so I'm nowhere as skilled as him. Hauer was responsible for all construction work within the church. That was before you joined. He was one of the earliest mechanoids to join the church, with Magician and Hierophant as his peers. The church of Machina only stand, started to truly form after Arcana found them. In human speech, he is an OG member of the church. So the sage wants us to bring Cervantes back to the church. Nah, sage said she needs to gather our scattered comrades for the path she believes in. Other than Tower, there are still Moon, Stars, Justice, and a lot more people to, for us to find. Together, with the new ally Nanami is about to awaken, our expedition is just starting. You mean that Kowloon mechanoid has been kept in the church for years? I don't know if she has regained consciousness yet or not. She will. And under the sage's guidance, we will be united. She raises her head, looking over to the windmill tower not far away. Let's go to, to finish the mission she gave us, and to welcome our wandering friend home. Hidden in the shadows in a corner. You mean, those two just now aren't the members of Babylonia you mentioned. A girl with her figure mostly hidden by a cloak stands next to a mechanoid. After listening to his whispers, the wanderer looking... Girl lowers her head in contemplation and mumbles to herself. Babylonia. Where have I heard that before? And Isla. They come for it? Or... But since the music has sounded and curtains have been pulled, it would be rude for the audience to leave halfway, right? Selena. Please, go back. Find your wife. Searching all over for you. Please. Your wife is going insane. Searching for you. Wow. No matter how many times she has seen Kaolung, she is still stunned by its magnificence every time. A city engulfed by rainbow colored lights, sparks flashing from the numerous buildings, even when it is a mini exhibition version, it is still breathtaking. On the other side, a large ship slowly appears on the projected water. <coughs> on the ship are the shadows of people, never dimming lights and a faint singing voice. A flexile and simulacrus make Thusly it cometh and goeth at the pluck of digits ten. How transient it flutter. That is... The Niter. I can't believe Cervantes was able to recreate both Kaolung and the Niter. But this layout... Do we have to separate into two groups and visit different exhibition halls? But... He could look from left to right indecisively. On her left... Isla is staring at the exhibition hall in front of her, eager to rush in, while Trojan is just standing there without expressing much interest. On her right, Lena holds onto her bow, mindlessly cleaning it. Her gaze sometimes wanders over to Trojan and Sika. Lena, is something the matter? No, nothing. Her gaze drops as she continues to wipe the non-existent dust off her bow. So how should we divide? Any suggestions, Isla? As the only member from the WGAA, Isla is the one who understands Cervantes the most, which is why Sika asked Isla. Hmm, me? Brought back to her senses by Sika's voice, Isla turns with her arms folded and looks at her teammates who are in different mentalities. Hmm, according to my understanding of Kaolung and the Niter, Kaolung should be the main route while the Niter should be the side quest. From the experiences before, I can see that Cervantes put, a <coughs> put in a lot of thought. When recreating these exhibitions, he prioritized authenticity. So why don't Trojan and I visit the Kowloon exhibition and Sika and Lina can check out the Niter? 
Jojen is not at her best due to frame issues, but she can balance out my experience. Well, Lina has both experience and power, so you can familiarize yourself with Sika. What do you think, Sika? I think that is sensible, right, Lina? Hmm. <coughs> Lina frowns, not exactly satisfied with this grouping. She purses her lips and unconsciously tightens her grip on her weapon. On a personal level, she does not want to deepen her connection with this overly young commandant. Rash, youthful, all talk with no action. She's not good with this kind of people, but... Her gaze lingers on Trojan for a second before quickly averting it. A dated frame from Kurono and a mysterious past. Lena? It's nothing. Lena lowers her gaze as if to hide. I do not object. I'll go over to the nighter with Commandant. Then it's settled. Isla and Trojan will go to the Kowloon exhibition while Lena and I will investigate the nighter exhibition. And we'll reconvene here. Just a heads up. After confirming the assembly point, Pika and Lena head off first to the Niter exhibition, and Lena seems to be explaining something to Sika on the way. Hmm. Seeing the two off, Trojan asks uncertainly, Are those two really going to be fine? What could possibly happen? What if, like in the exhibition hall before, the mechanoids battle and the two of them get into an argument? I thought you would suggest for me to pair up with Sika while you buddy up with Lena. Huh. I think you're overthinking. We're all on the same team anyway. We have the time. We have the time to get to know each other. <coughs> and one day we'll be close enough. So, no need to ignore the relationship between those two. Eh? There are carvings on the windows up ahead. Is that the legendary ancient Kowloon window frame patterns? Isla runs over excitedly. Trojan glances over in the direction of Sika and Lena once more before following Isla deeper into the exhibition. Alright, so we know from the beginning that Trojan's pretty iffy. In this hall, you will find Kowloon cultural relics and demonstrations, some of which may include puzzles. You can choose whether to skip them or not based on your own preference. Uh, do not skip the stage. Unsteady. Hi, pay attention to the surrounding. Fine. Probably we're also high. Welcome to next performance is Kowloon War Dance. Oh. Right, we're going to that. And we... This dance is truly a perfect blend of aesthetic and practical aspects. I had some prior knowledge of Kowloon's traditional arts, but this is way more exhilarating experience. Exhilarating. More like nerve-wracking to me. It should be safe now. Where shall we start? Let's check out the projection. Maybe we'll find something new. Uh, introduction. Welcome to the Kowloon Hall. Here you will find the essence of the art and culture of Kowloon. This hall showcases a variety of unique Kowloon artifacts, including traditional calligraphy, ancient mythological relics, and traditional musical and dance instruments. You can also interact with me to watch traditional Kowloon musical and dance performance. I wish you a pleasant experience in this hall. Okay, uh, ah. defense program activated, oh, okay, <coughs> do not, uh, wait, that's not what I meant.
Okay, I'm just gonna... Whee. Oh no, did I... Whoops. Okay, maybe this will look good. Oh. Smart service. Greetings, visitor number one. What can I do for you? Uh... Fortunately, I'm able to perform this due to damage voice components. Uh, umbrella dance. You're about to watch Umbrella Dance, a martial art dance known for its graceful moves. Enjoy. Nice. I am stuck in this <laughs> in this mode because I decided to Oh, I don't have the uh Well uh Unnamed Halberd weapon. Halberd weapon that perfectly combines the spear and dagger axe. Originally used as a ceremonial weapon, later as a powerful war weapon in Kaolong. Uh-huh. <coughs> the eight diagram shaped mirror has been regarded as a feng shui lucky charm throughout Kaolong's long history. The mirror consists of trigrams in the order of E, Thunder, Southeast Wind, South Fire, Southwest Earth, West River, Northwest Heaven, North Water, Northeast Mountain. Oh. Kowloon's traditional musical instruments that was originally used in ritual dances in battle. Now part of Kowloon's traditional dance performance. Okay, I'm gonna have to put uh, in position others. Control and then one, two, three, four. Okay. Uh. Oh wait, left control. Nope. Uh, uh, have I soft locked myself? I think I may have soft locked myself. Oh no. Well then, uh. <laughs> Oh, okay. Maybe not. <laughs> Wait, no, I need to... It needs to turn, right? Uh... Wait, what was it again? <laughs> North on the bottom, south on the top. Okay, so... No. And then it's... Okay, uh, water, fire, 
Okay, water north, fire south, thunder east, river west. So it's what was it? Uh, there we go. Hey, puzzle solved. Yay. <clears throat> gotta go back and forth a bit, you know? Gotta, gotta look around. Oh, now we're gonna find... cool. Ah. Really need to wash you. Ooh, has got back up again. I don't think we can defeat them one by one. Two holes are related. Does that mean we must defeat Washu and Q at the same time? Right, let's test the synergy of Iris Warbler. Lena will be our primary combatant here. I will sync our battle status to your terminal, Isla. Please adjust your tempo based on the live status of our side. No problem. Flourish of her Tonfa's Trojan dislodges the glaive from Ku's grip, and then Isla eats the coup de grace. The sharp blade weaves an elegant dance across the body of Ku, delivering a weighty strike that is potent enough to render her immobilized. The wound opens up to expose the metallic intricacies within that sizzle and crackle with electric sparks. As her vulnerability is laid bare, she is finally stripped of the facade of ease she once held. Impressive. It seems that the fight on the other side has ended as well. Visitors, the victory is in your hands now. She can talk. Visitors, do you find it peculiar that I possess the ability to engage in conversation? I thought you could only say those preset lines, after all. You made a fair point indeed. I'm a seemingly authentic imposter. In fact, perhaps even worse than that. I merely granted a resemblance to the original, with an implanted personality that appears plausible. I am nothing more than a counterfeit, created solely for the purpose of conforming to the impression of this particular exhibition hall. I have never laid eyes upon the real Kaolung. The only genuine connection I have with that place is through the physical materials used in constructing my body. 
Cervantes acquired them from Kowloon in the pursuit of precision and intricate details. Are you aware? You are not that cool. Eh, that's not something you would discern right from the start. Initially, I only existed as a mere imitator, tasked with reenacting a specific piece of history, performing a specific moment repeatedly. However, at some point, I started to have this dream. The dream about a grand metropolis standing proudly by the sea, inhabited by a peaceful and prosperous people, and their supreme who vows to safeguard her land at any cost. That dream became a haunting phantom within my mind, compelling me to question my true identity. So what was the conclusion you drew? Nothing. I'm nothing more than an empty vessel. A decorative stage, merely serving as a means rather than a purpose. Just like a dot of color on a canvas, not deserving of any distinct significance. Then why do you... Playing your role is all you want. Why are you sharing this with us? You ask me why? Perhaps I simply seek an end to that endless dream. <coughs> I deliberately introduced a flaw into this flawless facsimile. And only in this way am I able to pose the question as who I truly am. A question that has haunted me for a long time. It remains unanswered till this day. If you have ever been to the real Kowloon, please tell me. What is the present life like for the people in Kowloon? Does the city still revel in the splendor it once enjoyed during the Golden Age? Is the queen named Ku truly a wise leader? What kind of future awaits Kowloon under her guidance? I'm sorry, I'm not sure if I'm in a position to give you answers. However, I know quite a few individuals from Kowloon, and from their perspective, it seems that Kowloon is progressing in the direction anticipated. They w there were, are, and will be countless hindrances and adversities on that path. But the people of Kowloon never speak of giving up, not even once. That's all I can tell you. I see. That would suffice. Congratulations, visitors. I hope you can provide the answer that gentleman seeks. With a smile, Who extends her arm and places the data chip in Isla's hand. Then she closes her eyes in a solemn moment, accompanied by the sound of termination. This unnamed vessel ceases to move. Mm -hmm. Silently, Isla accepts the object that Ku bestowed upon her in the final moments of her existence. Another fragment of Cervantes' memory data. May I be the one to read it this time too? Of course. Isla nods and proceeds to insert the chip into the data port on her frame. Confirming. Oral time synchronization. 2.47 AM UTC plus 8. Mr. Carl, may I know where Michelle is? Confirming. Questionnaire identity. Leader of Kowloon. Confirming coordinates of Michelle's location. Error. No transponder signal detected. A new recording has been added to the message box. Play. I will be strolling around Kowloon today. No need to look for me. From Michel. Verifying original schedule. Private meeting with the leader of Kowloon. Operating error. Light overload and emotion module detected. Initiating self. Confirming. Level 2 emergency confirmed. Initiating search for solutions. Conflict unable to activate corresponding measures due to limited oper... Due to limited uh, process, limited operational range. Switching to emergency behavior mode. Initiating system soft reboot. I regret to inform you that Michelle is currently unavailable. It appears that he embarked on a sightseeing excursion within Kowloon early this morning. I take responsibility for not confirming the schedule with Michelle in advance, Lady Ku. If this has resulted in any inconvenience or caused you any distress, I will personally discuss the matter with Michelle to arrange appropriate compensation. There would be, that would be unnecessary. This wasn't seen as an official meeting anyway. No diplomatic affairs involved. Furthermore, it was the views and cultures of Kowloon that enticed Michelle. 
was the leader of the city. I consider it a source of delight and honor. It really is beautiful. Pretty. Thank you for your generosity, Lady Ku. However, now that I have some rare free time away from my responsibilities, it would feel rather lonely to spend it all by myself. I had planned to discuss with Michel on topics pertaining to art and culture. I presume you, as his assistant, have also been influenced by his expertise. I'm merely a mechanoid assisting Michel with trivial tasks in his life. I don't possess much understanding of human art. Is that so? Interestingly, <coughs> one of my family members holds a completely opposite opinion. He believes that mechanoids provide insights that run even deeper than those of humans. How about considering it as helping your master accompany his host for a casual conversation? I am delighted to be of service. He does not understand why Ku insists on inviting him for a talk. Given the present circumstances, he finds no reason to decline. Accompanied by Ku, he strolls through the winding alleys, making his way towards the restricted complex located at the heart of the city. Ku leads him to a towering structure, its viewing deck offering a breathtaking panoramic view of the entire Kowloong. Welcome to the Kowloong Sky Deck. For over a millennium, the Astroverse Bureau of Kowloong has diligently observed the stars here, shaping the very foundations of our calendars. I enjoy spending my leisure time here. The tranquility makes it an ideal place for deep thinking and meeting close friends. You can also see the entire Kowloong from up here. As Carl follows Q's gaze, he is greeted by the sight of the city expanding like a chessboard. With streets adorned with paper lanterns and festoons to celebrate the upcoming new year, even in the daylight, he can imagine the awe-inspiring night view that will unfold after the sun sets. Observing the bustling streets, Carl makes an attempt to search for Michel among the crowds. However, the idea quickly dissipates, abandoned within a fleeting moment. You've talked a lot to me along the way. From what I see, you are far from boring as you initially claimed. I'm simply echoing what I heard from Michel. However, I'm glad to have had the opportunity to provide you with entertainment, Lady Ku. He's a talented theorist as well as a man of action, constructing a city that emulates the splendor of the Golden Age, is seen as an impossible mission by many. In his pursuit of completing this project, Michel has embarked on numerous journeys, exploring various locations and leaving no stone unturned. Do you believe he can complete it? I always do. This is the first time that you clearly stated your opinion on something. Because Michel is always confident. Gazing calmly at Kowloon below, Carl beholds a magnificent city that exudes both vibrancy and grandeur. Yet the vision Michel holds within his heart surpasses even the spectacle, leading Carl to comprehend why many view his goal as nothing more than an artist's futile dream. Lady Ku, may I ask you a question? Please go ahead. Could you tell me, what does this city mean to Kowloong? This is a rather intricate subject, and I'm afraid a few words are far from enough to draw a definitive conclusion. But if you have to conclude it with a few words? Testament. It serves as a testament to Kowloong's existence. As long as the city stands, it instills hope within our people for the future of Kowloong. The city of Kowloong was erected millennia ago upheld by the sturdy pillars of our civilization. Throughout the ages, we have continuously added bricks and tiles to it, leaving behind tangible traces of our existence in this world. <clears throat> You're still not done with that hypocritical speech after all these years. From behind Ku and Ka rings in an androgynous voice, laced with a touch of disdain. Villiers, you're back from the Science Council. Why didn't you notice me ahead? Why would I report to you about my whereabouts, so you can arrange a grand reception and have everyone line up to give me a warm welcome? I simply don't see the point in staying there any longer, especially since the current stage of Gestalt's development has ended. I can achieve better work efficiency in my old studio here, but I find it disappointing that Kowloon hasn't changed a bit 
still as noisy and irritating as ever. Villier! <clears throat> Just when I thought I had finally found a place to escape from that dreadful chaos, you showed up here with a mechanoid. Unbelievable. Is it really that surprising to you that I'm conversing with a mechanoid, Villier? I have zero interest in whom you are talking with, it's just... Villiers directs his gaze towards Carl, his dark eyes reflecting a, a blend of perplexity and doubt. As an entirely rational creature, how did you manage to ask such a joke-like question? I don't understand what you mean. Cities are mere conglomerations of foul human connections, sorted by products that arise during the progress of the inherently flawed human civilization. The extravagant facade is but a fleeting shadow of nature, crafted from vanity and designed to deceive the gullible. <clears throat> wow, don't you have a positive outlook on humanity? <clears throat> As a mechanoid who measures the world using numbers, how is it that you fail to perceive the true nature of the city through your calculations? I'm afraid the calculations required to ascertain that theory demand an arith arithmetic module far more advanced than the one built within me. Forget it. Then, it would be utterly absurd for me to expect an antiquated piece with an outdated module to meet my ideal standards. Really, eh? suppose you succeeded in constructing your ideal creation. How can you be certain that it will arrive at the same conclusions as you? Would you also find yourself disappointed if its calculations were to defy your expectations? That's a meaningless sophistry. Villiers, the angular young man, displays a frown and turns away in disdain, choosing to depart. <laughs> get bodied. Silently, Carl observes as Villiers walks away. Still, Villiers' opinion is not entirely unjust. There are far more things hidden underneath Kalung's ostentatious facade. <clears throat> if that's true, why don't you advocate for a superior societal module to replace the existing one? Only natural for mechanoids to seek the, rep the replacement of the old with something new, I presume. In reality, there isn't a particularly intricate reason for not doing so. Rather, we don't require one. We simply made the choice to become what we are today. Recording stop. <clears throat> Alright, well. Watch this one, and then that's where we'll end it for today. Moonlit night on the Nyeper. What he longs for is not merely a happy ending. That mechanoid called Cervantes actually visited Kowloon and met the real Ku. Considering there are two exhibition halls dedicated to Kowloon, it is likely that he also visited the Niter after the outbreak of the Punishing Virus. Now that I think about the Arctic Hall and the unexplored ones waiting us ahead, he may have even traversed around the entire world. He seems to have a strong obsession with a particular thing. Indeed, his actions such as returning to Constellia, building these exhibitions, and all the other endeavors he has undertaken towards us, are likely driven by a specific intention. While there is currently no direct evidence, it is plausible that his motivation is related to the person he served, Michel Vasari, the designer of Constellia. Michel. He was from the WGAA, right? Shouldn't you guys have more knowledge about him than anyone else? Um, I suppose you could say that, but there are widely known rumors of Michel not seeing eye to eye with the former WGAA leader. Although he didn't formally resign from the association, he chose not to actively participate in most of its affairs, resulting in limited records about him left. Furthermore, the Constellia project was always shrouded in utmost secrecy, so Michel's whereabouts during his later years remained a mystery to most WGAA members. Following the outbreak of the Punishing Virus, our association experienced the devastating loss of documents related to the Golden Age. Meanwhile, Numerous members were unable to board Babylonia, leaving us even fewer clues. Chairman Allen may know some inside information. Fortunately, our current circumstances prevent us from contacting him now. We intended to, de to delve deeper into the matter, but at that time, my attention was diverted to another pressing concern. With such limited information available, anyone would have it overlooked. Three days ago, I could never have imagined that I would find myself on a mission within an art museum. 
That's true. I had imagined that we might come across a horde of malevolent robots who had seized control of the city, operating towering machines larger than themselves, and engaging in daily turf wars. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Isla. Or the city would unfold as a colossal mechanical citadel, concealing a subterranean zero-point anti-gravity engine capable of transforming into a fully armed floating fortress upon activation. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, I'm not going to lie, that actually sounds pretty cool. Were you going to alter the entire world settings? If anomalies like the hetero tower can occur in this world, why should giant robots and floaty sittings be considered implausible? Even if they were to exist, do you think we would be able to handle the situation by ourselves? Well, at least we could cheer for the heroes who step forward, right? <coughs> I would work on a big set of paintings and name it something like Epic Encounter. Grey Raven versus the Great Airborne Fortress, or New Strike Hawk Saga, Operation Meteorite. <laughs> so the idea of handling it by yourself is not even in your consideration. I'm a painter. What else do you expect a painter? What else do you expect from a painter other than creating artwork? I don't even know where to start my criticism. Reversing <laughs> through the hall where they have just completed the challenge, Isla and Trojan proceed towards the corridor leading to another Kowloon Hall. Upon entering, they are greeted by the sight of two exhausted figures leaning against the wall side by side, as motionless as two dolls running out of power. You're already here. Great work, guys. <laughs> Deka and Lena remain silent, or to be precise, their exhaustion has rendered them unable to provide any response. Lena, you're here. Time to move. Shut your mouth and let me rest a bit longer. Even their argument lacks its usual vigor. After about 15 minutes, Sika and Lena finally struggle up from the ground. <clears throat> you don't, both don't appear injured. What drained you so much? What drained so much of you? She's the one who's physically drained. As for me, think of it as mental damage. Lena covers her forehead, displaying evident reluctance to recall her fighting experience with Sika. We ran outside the safe range I marked for her every single time we engaged with enemies, even rushing recklessly ahead of me a few times. And the strategies she proposed all could potentially cost her own life. With our battle power split in halves, we didn't, ha we didn't employ bolder approaches. Our combat would become a drag and impede their progress. Why can't you trust me more? Regardless of the circumstances, I'm still a FOS graduate with actual field experience. Trust. You expect me to blindly trust you after just meeting you. Are you that naive to believe that you can entrust your life to a construct whose name you just learned? How the heck do they depict their relationships between constructs and commandants at FOS? Like a big happy family or what? The commandant's role is to dish out orders, not to cozy up for a buddy-buddy relationship. Relying on the assumption of blind trust for your strategies is a major screw-up right from the start. Don't you know about all the messed up situations that happened because people put too much trust in the combat strategies? Ignoring the possible risks just because you got lucky a couple times is a surefire way to end up in a total mess. Lena's rapid fire interrogation leaves Sika dumbfounded, causing her to struggle to respond. <coughs> the girl attempts to argue back almost instinctively, but with a noticeably weaker demeanor. Damn, Lena had those rants on log. Like, those were ready and to just be fired out when needed. But it shouldn't be like that. There are squads like Grey Raven, the one led by Spaniard, Kalung, Bullia Forest Park, the Hetero Tower. They've set so many examples. We may spend our entire life in pursuit of an elusive answer. We cannot define the true value of our struggles and efforts. But here we are, still eagerly anticipating the arrival of each new day. Because humans never walk alone. I could never have made it this far relying on my own strength. My teammates, my instructor, my comrades. They are the sole reason I stand here today. Your father was one of the fire soldiers who chose to become a construct during the post-pandemic age. Hard earning the, the title of a hero in Babylonia. However, no one expected that his daughter would desire to follow in his footsteps. Fortunately, it appears that your Tentalum 193 affinity does not reach the required levels. 
We are unable to transform you into a construct as you hope. Perhaps you can consider aiming to become a commandant instead, but you can still contribute significantly to humanity. Assault Warfare against City 74 concluded as a resounding success, with the Grey Raven squad once again playing a crucial role. Grey Raven. How to earn Construct's trust? How would you want to do that? Constructs are items, tools, or measures employed to achieve victories. You're not supposed to play the friendship game with them. Are you seriously going to feel sorry for broken tools? Having too much empathy never makes a good commandant. Just look at the Suzaku squad, Exhibit A. We all know what happened to that commandant and his teammates. By the way, don't even utter a single word about Grey Raven in front of me. You see this scar? This is the proof of what they did to me. If you dare say you want to become a commandant like that, get out of my sight immediately. Trust you. I have neither the interest nor the time to invest in building a relationship with someone who's still wearing a diaper. I was wondering about the deal with FOS, Chief. Uh, turned out we are here to babysit of all things. Stay behind us in every battle. It will save us a lot of trouble and give you more experience. At least your profile can look prettier. Let me be straight here. You will not become the second Chrome or the second Spaniard. From what I see in your talent, potential, and performance, it seems highly unlikely for that to happen. I just want to become someone like them. Like the person I look up to. I just think their approach is the correct one. Hmm. You know, I had a good point there. I've only known each other for a few days and I've also been taught not to leave my back exposed to others unless there's absolutely no other option. Not to mention, being a human made of flesh, you should definitely be more mindful of these things on the surface. Isla, do you agree with them too? Hmm. I indeed sort of sense the Sundere side of Lena. She does have a certain independent nature, like a cat accustomed to living alone. She will not easily show you her belly and ask for pats just for a few treats you give. <laughs> Don't compare me to a cat like that. I'm just teaching her the most basic knowledge that every task force member should have. You feel called out there, Lena. Look, you're the captain and you've been to the surface countless times. You should know whether what I'm saying is true or not. I don't think Sika's opinion is entirely off base. I've been staying tuned into the Grey Raven Commandant's actions myself. And there are some valid points to consider. However, we are not Grey Raven, are we? We're a squad that is in a league of our own, you know? How should I put this? It's like our members have these complicated backgrounds and the path we're about to venture on is no walk in the park. The future of this squad is still uncertain, no doubt about it. But amidst all the uncertainty, it's crucial for you to have a clear understanding of what needs to be done to guide Iris Warbler towards its des destined path. After all, you are the command. You are the commandant of Iris Warbler. Hmm. Trojan leans against the street lamp, quietly adjusting the personal terminal on her arm. Bathed in the colorless light, her scion hair exudes a chilling luminescence. Her gaze remains fixated on the screen of her terminal. Her thoughts seemingly immersed in profound contemplation. After a flurry of encounters, Sika is too exhausted to continue. Trojan and Nyla's weapons also need maintenance. Damage during the battle against Ku. Squad settles on a suspension of exploring and retreats to the street outside, following Lena's suggestion to camp there for the night. Despite having already checked the surroundings, the squad decides to maintain a watchful stance and take turns keeping guard, and Trojan volunteers for the first shift. The night in the city proves to be livelier than anticipated. The lights emanating from the towering buildings flicker irregularly. Weaving a three-dimensional matrix of codes, though which mechanoids exchange information or delve into the realm of the art they seek to explore. The colossal windmill standing in the center emits a captivating blue glow, <coughs> leaving Trojan to ponder how the city's nocturnal vista would unfold if she were to witness it from that vantage point. Perhaps atop the windmill's pinnacle stands the mechanoid named Cervantes, gazing intently back in Trojan's direction. Cervantes. Her gaze lingers only for a moment before shifting away. Trojan then turns around after closing the virtual screen of her terminal. There's still some time left until the next shift. Having trouble falling asleep. A little bit. I'm thinking about the mechanoids in the city. The dynamic between Cervantes and Michel also seems very captivating. And... 
And don't worry about it. It's something unrelated to our mission and unnecessary to bring up now. I thought you agreed with Sika on the importance of absolute honesty among comrades. Are you keeping a secret from your team or your own teammate right now? <laughs> Just like you, I have my own little secret. If you're eager to uncover it, give it your all to win my affection. But considering the complexity of our mission this time, we'd better concentrate our efforts on the exploration of the art museum for now. I can't help but feel a tad uneasy about Cervantes' memory data and what Basile mentioned regarding people from Babylonia. They're always so upbeat, and I thought these things wouldn't bother you at all. What about you? You always seem lost in thought with a solemn expression while gazing into the distance. Are you going to let worries and troubles consume your mind? Well, it's not like I'm never bothered, but I just find that things feel better when approached with a positive mindset. Is this how you view our squad? Absolutely. This is my first time being part of the task force for a surface mission. I'm not over with the excitement yet. Moreover, don't you think everyone in our squad has so much untapped potential? Sure, those battles before were tough, but we all pulled through in the end. The same goes for you, Trojan. Oh, we haven't properly celebrated our flawless teamwork back in the Kowloon Hall. Now, give me a high five. Having said that, I like sent her hand with a beaming smile, waiting for Trojan to reciprocate. Do I really have to? Trojan lets out a sigh, but then raises her arm to give Ida's palm a gentle tap. Just to give you a heads up, I'm pretty much on the same page as Lena. Last time I heard the word comrade was way back in my teenage days, flipping through a picture book during the Golden Age. Hmm. It's true that we may not become comrades, or rather, it's not just... It's just not possible for most people in the world to become comrades. It's already a miracle of miracles to encounter a close friend whom you can trust with your life. And even if you do find such a person, there's no guarantee they'll stick around forever. <clears throat> However, even if we can't become comrades, we're still teammates, aren't we? We may have completely different motives and intentions, but at least we are working towards the same goal. That's good enough. I don't know if I should call you carefree or persistent. Persistent, without a doubt. I'm still incredibly intrigued by your past, and Lena's too. I don't know why, but something tells me that I'll find wonderful story inspiration from that. Generally speaking, aren't you supposed to say some cheesy lines to help me work through my emotional baggage and leave my past shadows behind? I can certainly give it a shot if that's what you're looking for, but I must admit that my expertise doesn't lie in that particular area. The Grey Raven Commandant is likely an expert in that regard. You might have a better chance with that person. <coughs> the Grey Raven Commandant. A truly unique presence even with even in the task force. Up the invasion of the Punishing Virus and thwarted the Ascendant's plans more times than I can count. Retrieved crucial data for researching Omega weapons, played a pivotal role in the Lunar Base incident, gambled everything owned to save a teammate. Imperia, who was destined to be sacrificed. Wouldn't be surprised if anyone deemed that person the savior of Babylonia. Too unrealistic to stop someone from admiring such a remarkable individual, isn't it? Trojan's face breaks into a faint smile. Yet her words are not intended for Isla's ears. On the second floor of the building where the squad stations... A lithe figure opens the window and gracefully leaps inside, moving with the nimbness, nimbleness of a cat and making nary a sound. Not denying the Grey Raven has brought a sense of hope, but it's impossible to replicate that hope. Hope that cannot be replicated will eventually turn into a toxic influence, leading people to lose their grip on reality. Just as that commandant reached Imperia's side, Construct stationed on the surface initiated a mass defection all at once. Do you have any idea that during the defection, how many comrades, commandants were betrayed by constructs, and how many constructs were unjustly disposed of due to the baseless allegations made by their commandants? The higher ups made the choice to sweep the whole thing under the rug by singing praises of the Imperia miracle. But how can you expect someone who personally witnessed a mass defection to buy into such nonsense? So that's why you said those. Said that to Sika. It would only be better for her commandant career if she corrects her foolish misconceptions while she can. 
Rather than going through it firsthand and later regretting it, actually, if it truly occurred, she might not even have the chance to feel regret. It seems like you're hinting at something else. You have been watching me since nightfall, haven't you? To be more precise, since the very beginning. This is a squad established by the WGAA. Having a construct with a Corona background on board says a lot, don't you agree? Look, there's no need to dwell on something that happened ages ago. I've been faithfully serving the task force all these years. And just so you know, my inclusion in the squad has the stamp of approval from General Wells himself. Lee and Grey Raven, Vera and Cerberus, and even Commander Nicola, they all have a Corona background. Are you planning to scrutinize each of their positions? And what's the deal with your service records being totally blank? What well, went down with your previous squad that made them wipe out all the related data? <clears throat> that's, some, that's not something you need to worry about. How about you spill the beans on your experience quitting Caribou first? Hmm. With its chilling gaze locked between them, Trojan extends her arm towards the tonfas lying nearby, while Lena clenches the bow tightly in her hand. Hmm. <clears throat> this face. Caught in the midst of their intense confrontation, Isla stealthily takes out her notebook and pencil. Her gaze becomes unwavering, as if she's poised to jot down every detail, fully engr engrossed in observing Lena and Trojan. What are you doing? No, no, please don't mind me at all and carry on. I just don't want to miss any juicy bits. Are you two going to keep on exposing each other's deepest, darkest secrets from the past? Or are you going to grab your weapons and face off? Am I getting in your way here? Should I take a step back to give you more space? Or maybe you want me to play judge? Honestly, I'm cool with whatever. Rather than diffusing the tension, Isla appears to be stoking the flames. Her excitement, reminiscent of a reporter on the verge of witnessing a sensational event. <clears throat> As our captain, shouldn't you step in and prevent this impeding clash? You know, say something heartfelt, ease the tension, and act like nothing ever went down? I know, but to let things unfold in a more captivating way, I'll do my best to resist the urge and see where it leads you. <coughs> You're not going to let up until you get an answer out of me, huh? We've got bigger fish to fry, don't we? Realizing that Isla has no intention of making peace, Trojan resigns herself to the situation, mustering a smile and making a gesture of temporary reconciliate reconciliation towards Lena. Alright, but just remember, this is a warning. When our mission ends, Lena shifts her gaze away from Trojan, focusing in instead on the windmill in the distance. <sighs> Going back to check on the Commandant. Let me know when your shift is over. With a wave directed at Isla, Lena retreats into the building. Ah, that almost had me breaking a real sweat. So, what's the verdict? Is the relationship between your teammates even worse than you thought? But you seem pretty chill about it all. Already braced yourself for the worst, huh? Before our squad was put together, I got a heads up from Chairman Allen that things could get a bit messy. But like I said, no matter where we come from, nothing can alter the fact that we're a team. Trojan, you're here because Iris Warbler can help you achieve something, right? Causes and convictions don't just magically come to life on their own. It's through actions that they leave their mark on reality. In whatever shape or form it assumes, I hope Iris Warbler can become something that holds profound meaning and value. Even if it veers off from the path everyone expects, even if it's branded as a failure down the road, I won't look back with any regrets for the efforts I've poured into it. The moon softly illuminates the dim room through the window, casting a soft glow that accentuates a small badge. In a secluded corner of the building, Sika sits with her head bowed, her gaze fixed upon the tough and cold proof cradled in her palm. Etched with a silver FOS symbol, the bottom of the badge bears the SL, the initials of her name. To this day, the memory still vaguely lingers of the audience's glances when she received this badge, symbolizing the prestigious title of chief during her graduation ceremony. 
Those glances were filled with envy, jealousy, despise, disbelief, and even shades of sarcasm and contempt. Deep down inside, she was actually aware of her own unworthiness for that honor, a truth that resonates within her more profoundly than anyone else could comprehend. Even so, she still wants to. You're requesting a transfer out of the squad. Yes, sir. The three of us all agree that a paw today doesn't hold much promise for the future, even if we choose to stay. Applications have already been submitted by commandants seeking personal reinforcements for their squads. Considering the circumstances, I believe the general staff has no grounds to reject our transfer this time. Our cooperation with the commandant didn't go that well, as she struggled to adapt to our combat style. If I remember correctly, she sent you to escort the engineering force to Conservation Area 27 during the Hetero Tower mission. However, instead of promptly contacting her after completing the task, you opted to proceed independently. Can you give me an explanation? During that period, the surface communications were severed, and it wasn't just our squad that experienced the loss of contact with teammates. As per military protocol, constructs are granted the authority to make certain decisions in situations where they lose contact with their commandants. However, the investigation conducted by the communication center reveals that your transponders were operational, and the commandant had been making efforts to request your coordinates. Huh. I trust the general staff is well aware of the intense electromagnetic interference that occurred during that period. General, are you insinuating that we intentionally disregarded the communication request from the commandant? That's not what I said. I just wanted to make it clear that your Commandant's utmost concern had always been your safety until the very end. And nothing else. Your transfer applications have been approved. It was the initial intention of the General Staff. I've always been... What I, what I should do now, and what I want to become. Zika firmly clutches the badge, resolute in her quest to bury the past and then tucks it away into her waste pack. Uh, one more. This is a combat thing, so why not? Oh, thing is Heikma. The Night Watch. Heikma, behind you. Multiple hostile signals detected. Executing combat measures. Having brought down his final adversary with a resounding stomp, Spooner pivots around, only to behold a scattered landscape of machine parts rendered lifeless. Each piece lies cleaved in perfect halves, a testament to the surgical precision of Heikma's scythe. As the battle subsides, Spooner approaches Heikma, gesturing to signify the absence of any further hostile activities. With a resigned expression, he scratches his head, reflecting a blend of relief and fatigue. Boy, the Cervantes dude, he's a real troublemaker. I mean, sure, the guy can build all the fancy art museum he wants, but what's the deal with all these combat machines he's got? These machines lack the capacity for thought and learning, they can only carry out basic commands and move accordingly. What's more, some of them are even designed to resemble corrupted and hetero creatures. Based on what I observed in this place, it appears that these machines are significantly designed to help recreate certain symbolic localities. Almost all of them show signs of human activities. Even the city right here, it's likely he got a really deep liking for humanity, you know what I mean? I've gathered some information about Cervantes from Xavier and Trailblazer. Turns out that during the Golden Age, he served as a private assistant to a renowned human artist. They had a shared history for over a decade, and it seems that this city holds a deep connection to that human. That human had such a strong impact on him. During the Golden Age, humans embarked on an ambitious endeavor known as the Machine Consciousness Test Project, an experiment aimed at waking a genuine soul within a machine. Now it's created as the administrative AI for this project, and it was during that same period that I had the fortuitous encounter with Nanami, our esteemed sage. Over time and through a process of gradual progression, she reached the culmination of her awakening journey and emerged as the very first awakened mechanoid. Are you trying to say Cervantes, too, was among the subjects involved in the experiment? His entire existence alongside that artist was part of an undertaking aimed at observing the influence of art on the awakening of machine consciousness. 
However, only the experiment involving Sage was successful. That's correct. But Mother, Arcana, once told me this. For Mechanoids, the awakening marks merely the beginning of their journey. Self-consciousness cannot be deduced solely through data analysis. It is rather akin to a new birth, accompanied by both anguish and bewilderment. As our self-consciousness awakens, the paradoxical nature of reality begins to reveal its fangs. We discover ourselves no longer inhabiting a self-contained world governed by logical coherence alone. The weight of memories from the past can often burden our thoughts as we struggle to find answers to the questions that linger within us. Following the awakening, a significant number of mechanoids even opted for the path of self-destruction. <clears throat> this occurrence served as one of the initial catalysts for the establishment of the church which sought to mitigate such incidents from happening. He is one of the first mechanoids who joined the church, as he also been dealing with the so-called psychological problems. In essence, it can be said that all mechanoids experience varying degrees of psychological challenges. This is precisely the focus of Hierophant's endeavors, isn't it? So, if his mental state hasn't improved, then we actually expect to convince him to come back to the church, even if we meet him face to face. Hmm... Lunar's question silences Heikma, leaving her briefly at a loss for words. Hey, don't tell me that question ever crossed your mind. Ever since he left, the position of tower has remained empty because the church collectively acknowledges that there's simply no one better suited for the role than Cervantes. If he can perceive the summoning of Sage, he should be able to grasp our intention as well. Regardless, we must make the utmost effort first. With a faint smile adorning her face, Aikma is ready to leave the exhibition hall in the company of Spooner and continue their expedition into the depths of the museum. However, an abrupt change overtakes her countenance. Aikma swiftly interrupts Spooner's movements, activating the stealth module to muffle her footsteps. <coughs> My senses have picked up activity from living entities and from the biological signals registered. It appears to be a group of constructs. Constructs? Could they be from Babylonia? Or they somehow gotten the scoop on this city too. Switch on your tracking mode, Spooner. Let's make our way towards their vicinity first. Nodding silently in agreement, Spooner also conceals his footsteps. Lord 4, how's the hacking on the main system coming along? Of course, it's Kurona. Hey, Sword 9, can you hold your horses and give me a break? These encryption methods are completely new to me. If it were anyone else, I bet they'd spend a good three days just trying to find a loophole in the firewall. Both the teams of cups and wands have come up empty-handed on their missions, and the fledglings are already in motion. If we can't locate the cargo that the boss is after, we're going to be in a world of trouble. Sword 7, the location of the fledglings. <coughs> they have left Exhibition Area D and are making their way towards Area F. We must continue to narrow down our search area, or we'll inevitably cross paths with them. Ugh. This art museum is becoming a real pain. I would have thought that some mechanoids would cause us such a headache. The Pentacles are currently tackling the firewall in Area H. It won't be long before we gain full security access to this museum. If they hadn't triggered the alarm right from the start, we could have made even more progress. I'll say it once more, this mission has to be a success. If the task force gets their hands on the subject before us. It'll make much, it'll make much more... It'll take much more than just finding a few scapegoats to get out of this mess. Sword 4, don't forget to throw a wrench into the works once we gain system access. But to put an end to the fledglings right here and now. That squad still has... This is the latest order from the higher-ups. We need to ensure we erase all traces and leave no evidence behind. Losing a squad during a surface mission is just part of the job, isn't it? This is why everyone hates Kurona. That's literally why. Data filtering complete. Identity analysis concluded. Babylonia. Special contract forces of Kurono. Codename Swords. Looks like some rats managed to sneak into Cervantes' backyard garden. Fixing his gaze on the distant group of constructs, Booner speaks in a hushed tone. Shall we do some cleaning for him? Booner, watch over there. They've kidnapped two mechanoid residents from the city. Prompted by Heikma, Spooner shifts his gaze towards the corner where he spots two mechanoids being held hostage by the Corona constructs. This Lee and Monet.
Damn it. What did they do to them? Lord Seven, have those two weird machines been behaving themselves? Their systems crashed after we deployed the logic virus. Should I proceed with disposing of them? Let's leave them for be for now. It seems that some of their higher-ups are also studying mechanoids that display unique behavioral patterns. Once the hacking is finished, we'll extract their memory shells and bring them back as experimental materials. Ekma, what's the plan now? Lock on the hostile signals and wait for my command. Let's devise combat strategies while prioritizing the rescue of our own people. Heck yeah, let's kill some Kurono a-holes. <coughs> Calculating space module. Signal location confirmed. This should be it. What are these constructs doing here? Priority now is to rescue our kin. We need to finish everything before they hack in. They're hacking into the museum's security system. This is in line with our information. Who are you? Warning, two battle mechanoids spotted. <coughs> we can't dodge them, better finish this fast. Phew, there's something we can still use on him. There's something we can use on him. If the reinforcements were summoned by them, we should be able to find some ID cards. Uh, search. Sword 9 called. Squad called for attack support. Data document A found in area H. We're in the process of hacking this. Thing. Command received. Heading to the area. We've eliminated all the mechanoids in the hall. Uh, we have eliminated all the mechanoids that need to worry about safety. According to the rule that we can't decipher it before, so, uh, we'll have to give it up and destroy the evidence. We can't test force in the fledglings. Notice our actions. Uh, back to the uh, product instructions. Capable of controlling the match ground cracking device via various methods. The mid level and turn the personnel to keep secret, otherwise, there will be severe consequences. The impian advises. Uh, feature requires at least one person. Search complete. All the information has been retrieved. This ID card should get us permission to access the platform. Door unlocked. The control platform is also linked to the power source of the hall. Maybe we can use this remote control, but I'm not sure if it will also affect us. I'll leave it to you to come up with a plan, Heikma. Uh... From what we know, there is an entire squad inside trying to hack into the system. If we confront them directly, they may summon more reinforcements. This control platform is also connected to the power source of the hall. We can use it to block coronal signals. Perhaps we can control their cracking device remotely to unleash a pulse. But one of us must operate the device continuously. There's also a risk of failure. No problem. I'll stay here to use the remote while you wait for me in the hall. But you'll need to face them alone if my hacking fails. Okay. Ninety-eight, ninety-nine, success. I'll leave it to you. We've been set up. High performance combat mode activated. Objective: eliminate all enemies before the signal shielding ends. Synchronization rate increased. Attack unexpected incident occurred. Reanalyzing. Lock on. Analyze. High performance tactical circuit activated. Tactical circuit fully operational. Unexpected incident occurred. Reanalyzing. Alright. The battle is over. Can you investigate this place to see if there's more useful information? Uh, yeah, sure. Huge, con huge city constructed in the Golden Age, but I'm waiting for further. Mission X1, invade City X and recycle test subject. In case of any mechanoid who stands in the way, refer to attachment one, mechanoid minus control.
And special subject was lost. Coins confirmed test subject. Special team with special target. Let's retrieve it. Comms record. We have a limited on the mechanized. That's all I can find. Power the mechanized booner. Level virus contamination is not too high. I have injected a cleansing program and they should be fine after a while. Oh, thank God. That one stood back up. But. Okay. And with that, that's where we'll call it for today. I think we're doing pretty good. We're already at 18 out of 51. So. And it seems like we're getting very close to like the, the later half. So. That's where we'll call it for today. Thank you very, very much for stopping by. If you stopped by, any and all support is very much appreciated. And as always, may the moon guide you. Take care. Ooh.